All right. Hello, Fortinas, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to Ministry Revealed. It is March 7th, 2023, and we are counting down the days. It's something like a month or so to go, 31 days or something like that, to the highest of all high watches, expectations that we have ever had and the reason for it is the revelation of the 50 before the 14 years begin. It is mind-blowing. It's absolutely exciting for anybody who's hearing these things and doesn't know what we're talking about. Come and watch this live show I did with uh, Mike and I over on Interrupts 165. You can watch it right here. I had been looking at it being after Taurus at the Feast of Weeks, and Taurus at the Feast of Weeks is the beginning of tribulation. And as we know, there is a 50 days beginning that comes first. How fitting, right? Brothers and sisters, we were looking for what? An end and a beginning and an end and a beginning. A beginning at the 50 and a beginning at the beginning of 14 years. And now we've got it. I'm gonna, we're gonna touch on some fun things as we get started here. Just some great little connections. Something that I, I had shared in, um, in a in a zoom chat when i was with mike and yanni and those guys i think about a week or so ago and i forgot to put it in i forgot to mention it in the last video but because we know the beginning to the lord god is taurus and it never changes because we know in the beginning not only was it taurus but that the lord counts every single year his beginning of the year is always from taurus from the beginning of creation to the end of time his beginning of year is always Taurus at the Feast of Weeks. And so what had happened is, um, uh, uh, um, oh, and then, of course, then you've got the other part of the beginning, which was Feast of Weeks, but it wasn't Feast of Weeks in the beginning. It was Feast of First Fruits. And that's why 50 days earlier, we have a perfect count to the Feast of First Fruits. Feast of First Fruits, sorry, was the beginning. It was Taurus. Month one was Taurus at the beginning of creation. And at the very beginning, in the beginning, it was the Feast of Weeks. Now they're separated by 50 days. And how beautiful is it that we've been given this revelation and understood it for five years almost now, that there was a 50, a portion before, above the 14 years. We've been letting it. We were digging. We were digging. And the more we dug, the closer we got, the closer we got, the more he would give us. And then we got the Holy Ghost confirmation, that one confirmation that told us that we were right on target, that we were correct, that it was understood. And here we are in the year we know is the 70th. From every examination of every option, we have completely covered when they came into the land, when when they began to plant at the new year of trees, when, when they, they had a government and the government started, bang, the Lord didn't count from when their government started. The Lord didn't count from the day they came into the land. The Lord never changes. Our Father has always counted from Taurus and the Son is the Feast of first fruits. And they're separated by 50 in the end of days. Do you realize how wild that is? Because when Christ came, um, you know, 2000 years ago, the sun wasn't off by two day, uh, by two months. It was only off by a month. The entire revelation of the 50 before the 14 years of tribulation was planned, obviously, purposed and known, of course, by the Father before it all began. And we've been given this revelation of the open books. We've been given the revelation of the Lord for the is to come, which brought clarity to his entire creation. Well, get ready, brothers and sisters, because I thought it would be fun. I couldn't help it. We're going to take it from in the beginning to the very end. It's going to be awesome. You see, we've done uh, one video similar to this. We've done another video quite similar to this. Now we're going to take it from the very beginning, knowing all that we know, tie it all together with the key points. We're not going to drill down into every little bit of detail that that's revealed in the creations through to every piece in the gospels and every piece of revelation but you are going to get the picture you are going to see it you're going to see it laid out before your eyes 
And it's your responsibility to go see if these things are true. If you're new, you're going to say, this is over the top. This, I cannot, I, it, it's too much. Well, I promise you it's going to be too much. All right. I promise you. But it's such a glorious thing. It is such a beautiful thing because you're going to realize this is the revelation of our Lord and Savior from his creation to his end. It's absolutely beautiful. The revelation of the stories of creation are the stories of the end of days. What was shall be, what is shall be. It's absolutely incredible. So before we get there, though, before we get going into that, I'm going to show you some fun things, some some exciting connections. I'm going to show a clip from uh, a video from Stephen Bendenoon <coughs> as well that I think was put out yesterday or the day before. And I was just so excited by it. It was shared in the forum. And what he discovers, he's all excited about. And he rightly so. Rightly what he's discovered in the Apocryphas and then taking it into the Bible and seeing what the wording was, he gets very excited. But he does not know where it applies. All right? this I mean, we've tried reaching out to all of these people so many times over the years, but none of them want to hear this revelation because when you say 14 years, everybody just thinks you're nuts. Well, we have proven it. We have proven it from creation, and we have proven it through to the end of days. It's all true. There's a there's an easy seven years that come first. It's seven, seven, seven. You guys ever see that guy? There's a, a young fella. He's been on a number of different channels lately. I think he was just on one of the big ones, um, Robert Breaker. <clears throat> and all of these connections they find that it shows up 77 times and seven times and 77 and 77 times and seven times. And then there's seven, seven, seven and seven times seven and seven, seven. It's all over the place. It's the revelation we have here in this ministry. The end of days, which started just about seven years ago, is the final seven years of seven, seven, seven. They're the final three sevens of the final Shemitah cycle to the Jubilee. The entire creation story is a picture of 7,000 that flew by. Seven, seven days that are as 7,000 if we were there. 7,000 that we're in right now that are as if seven days to the Lord. The entire story is 777. But the, fo excuse me, but the focus is on a 50-day period, which is the final 50 days before the two final sevens, which are seven years of seals and seven years of trumpets. And if Stephen Bindanoon had ever taken the time to see where it is that what he's talking about is, it would blow his mind even more. So we're going to touch on that. We're going to touch on some other just fun little nuggets along the way and show something that we've known, that we were looking for, that we set aside. Think about this. If, which it is, not if, the Lord starts his year from Taurus, okay? At the Feast of Weeks in Taurus. It's always Taurus, which means to the Lord God, everything's two months off. Hello. If everything's two months off, wait until you see where something else is that we were looking for for a long time. It's right where it should be. It's going to blow your mind. And that's just a little nugget as we just go full scale into this. You want to see something? This is that Ste Stephen Bendenude video, but look at this. Every, <laughs> you see all these little lines? You see this showing up down here? All of these tabs, <laughs> all of these tabs are for tonight's video. <laughs> I can't help it, guys. It's so exciting. This is going to be a beginning to end, all right? It's going to be so beautiful. It's going to be so exciting to see. I, I'm going to go through it quickly, hopefully, as I usually do. Slow down when you need to. Pause when you need to. Rewind when you need to. It's going to be beautiful. And for anybody else who's new or newer to the ministry, and you still, you, you're hearing this and you're hearing, what on earth is this crazy guy talking about 14 years of tribulation? Well, you're about to understand that there was a mystery in the Gospels, okay, that Come to this playlist right here and come to this one right here, the Revealed End Time Study Note Series. I always like to share this first, all right? 
is where it all began about five and a half years ago. And it started with this revelation of who the Gospels are speaking to. You're going to realize that all of your life and for hundreds of years, generation after generation, we've all been taught from the Gospel of Matthew. And we look at Mark, we've always been shown Mark and Luke just in the Synoptic Gospels. They just give us a, a, another little perspective. Well, it's not true. The Synoptic Gospels, all the Gospels, but with the focus of the Synoptic Gospels, there was actually prophecy riddled throughout all of them. And the riddling of these prophetic insights that were there the whole time, were we call who the Gospels are speaking to. These things that people thought were, were inconsistencies, that, that were contradictions, we revealed here over five and a half years ago, it began, who the Gospels are speaking to. You're going to see in this video, this is a 30-minute Bible study. That's not, that's not a big deal, right? Just start here. If you're starting at tonight's video, your brain is going to melt, I promise you. <laughs> because we're going to cover the whole gamut. But if you start right here, you'll begin to understand what it is that we're talking about. You're going to come to see that Luke is speaking to the bride of Christ. Mark is speaking to, to the, what we would call the sleeping church, or it also includes the world, right? The house of Israel that's scattered throughout the earth and mingled with Gentiles that nobody knows who they are anymore. Okay, they're the world. It's the, the church that isn't prepared, that isn't watching, that, that you would call the sleeping church, that isn't ready. They are a part of that as well. They're going to endure seals. Theirs is seals. And Matthew is written to the Jews like pretty much everybody has always known. But what they never knew is who Mark and who Luke were speaking to. Everybody's known Matthew was to the Jews, but nobody knew. Mark and Luke with any certainty in the revelation of the Gospels. Nobody. And we've been revealing it here for over five years. It'll blow your mind. You're going to see things to give you one little piece. Well, two. These are great ones. And they're simple. When Christ is going to the cross in the Gospel of Luke, he's arrayed in a gorgeous robe. It, it means glorious, white, radiant, beautiful. In Mark, he's arrayed in purple. In Matthew, he's arrayed in scarlet. Were the writers colorblind? Did he have a wardrobe change? Was it like, oh, okay, let's put him in this one. Let's... Why did they all speak different colors? It was prophecy. The bride of Christ, the Gentile, there are two brides. The Gentile bride of Christ is pre-trib at the beginning. At the beginning of the 50 days. The mid-trib is the mark group, the purple. They're going to endure seals. And at the end of six years of seals, in that seventh year, is the great multitude rapture that will come in from the greatest revival in all of human history that people have been talking about is coming for years. It's going to come in the midst of the greatest tribulation the world has ever seen to that point. Okay? That's the mark group. Then you've got Judah. They're going to be removed from Jerusalem for seven years of seals. When the 50 days are over, well, they're going to be attacked at the beginning in northern Israel at the beginning of 50 days. And at the end of 50 days, when the 14 years begins, Jerusalem will be attacked. The Jews will be scattered. And for seven years, they'll be scattered. Then at the end of seals, when, when the fullness of the Gentiles has come in, it will begin the seven years of trumpets. But the world has twisted it all up and they've overlapped seals with trumpets or three and a half years and three and a half years. Why? Because they could not understand how everything fit into a seven year scenario. It's literally impossible. Once you begin to understand the revelation of the gospels, you're going to get so excited. It's going to cause you to dig and go read further for yourself and it's going to blow your mind. You can go to our ministryrevealed.com website. We have a book that we wrote about a year and a half, almost two years ago now, actually, just about two years ago. And you can go to the book. You can download it for free in five languages. You can listen to the audio uh, as well. 
which is in English, but I think there's even a video in uh, in Norwegian. Um, you could buy the book on Amazon, ebook or paperback if you like to flip through. And you can join us also if you'd like in the forum. It's free of charge. Take a few seconds to sign up. And it's 1,100 plus people all over the world. And we're sharing news, events, articles, prayers, uh, Bible studies, all sorts of things in there. All right. But this is chapter one. This is where it all starts. And this is just the intro. When you go to the book, you'll get much more detail. And as you go further into other teachings and other videos, you'll find it even more. The second part is the 14 years. This is the revelation that you're going to come to understand that totally relates and is revealed in the discourses. The reason why Luke's discourse is so different than Mark and Matthew's is because Luke's is a period of time of a 40, 50 day period of time. When you get to Mark's, it's the seven years of seals and Matthew's is the seven years of trumpets. You're gonna see it today in the play out of the revelation all the way back from creation. It's absolutely mind blowing. So once you get the, the gospels under your belt a little bit in the 14 years, you can come down and watch the discourses revealed. You see, remember you've, you've heard the last will be first, the first will be last. Well, Matthew, Mark, Luke in the end of days is Luke, Mark, Matthew. It's absolutely mind blowing. You're gonna realize it's seven years of seals and seven years of trumpets. And when you realize that, that it's Mark pre-trib, uh, sorry, Luke pre-trib, Mark mid-trib, and Matthew post-trib, that's because the first group goes to the third heaven, the second group goes to paradise when he comes on heavenly Mount Zion, and the third group is when the Lord returns feet down on the Mount of Olives. A taking, a taking, and a return. It's absolutely mind-boggling. So all these arguments and debates that have been happening for hundreds of years, pre, mid, post, they're all true. And everybody tries to argue them from a stance of Matthew. And it confuses them all. You see? It's so beautiful. This is what you're going to begin to understand here. And then watch this third one. This is a big video, but it's so important. It's called It's All Because of Matthew. And the reason it's called It's All Because of Matthew is because it's all because of Matthew. <laughs> well, it's all because of Matthew in the church, right? Did the church know? No. This was a mystery. This is a revelation for the end of days that, that Daniel was told, seal up the book for the time of the end. This is the revelation of the Gospels of Jesus Christ for the end of days. That's how powerful it is. Do you think I could just say something like that? Do you think I would just have the, have the cojones to just go ahead and say something like that if I didn't know after five and a half years of everything we've proven and every single time we find new pieces for which we have done this hundreds and hundreds of times in hundreds and hundreds of places? It always reveals the same story. It's mind blowing. And I promise you, if you've ever wanted to discover and understand how the end times really play out, if you've ever been confused by, by these differences and apparent contradictions in the gospels, this is your place. You will never read the gospels the same way again because you're gonna do it with an understanding that you have never had before. That's how powerful it is, okay? little sip of coffee. I love my coffee. <laughs> All right. So, and so again, and if you're newer or you've been watching even for a little bit, but you haven't watched these last two videos, I know they're long videos, right? These are teachings. I am a teacher. I'm not a pastor. I'm not a prophet. I'm not a preacher. I am a teacher. That is what I do. It is teaching the revelation of the open book, his word, for the end of days come to these two take your time study them then you can come and watch this one especially if you're newer and you'll understand what we're talking about and why there's an excitement in the air now because we have understood that we're coming up to the end of 70 years and we know that there are two beginnings and now they're both right on target it's absolutely phenomenal all right so let me start with this. Here's a little here's a little side note thing. Okay? My brother our brother Dennis shared this with me. Um here it is. Shared this with me in an email today. You guys have seen me talk about this before, right? <laughs> so Sabbaths or Shemitah years, right? So 
you guys know how the whole discovery of the four years right 70 and then four years or 70 and then four years or sorry four years and then 70 from leviticus or 70 and then four years going into luke chapter 13 right in relation to the fig tree by the way i haven't corrected this so you see uh first of nisan we know that the 50 days are going to begin at the feast of first fruits all right give or take you know maybe the sun or maybe the moon is off by a little bit but if the hebrew calendar is correct we know it'll be on the 16th of nisan and the 14 years of tribulation isn't going to begin in nisan it's going to begin at the feast of weeks in savan all right but what we know is that the the number of shemitahs or sabbath years right every seventh year the way this was discovered is we already knew that there were two sevens for the end of days and in fact a third but we knew there was two still to come so i went back this was a few years ago now right about three or so years ago and i started counting backwards by seven years seven 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 it brought us all the way back to the birth of christ and i counted that there were 289 <clears throat> and this word for 289 shows up in the bible only one time and it shows up in um in luke chapter 13 and it's all about the three years of the fig tree give it one more year to dung it and if not then cut it down that's the end of 70 plus four to the lord god it was four and then 70 right from when they also had a government and then counting from july and that's why and not july sorry from uh, taurus and that's why this year it is going to be cut down are we going to see that no if you are in christ spirit filled repentant loving there's no fear diligently seeking the lord there's no fear keep it up keep it up this is the year all right keep it up so what we know within this is that was 289 and we did this entire count and you just saw it even on that chart so what do we have well it's like it's like shemitah years right which is what weeks of years right just like the jubilee year year counts it's sabbath or shemitah years but we also know there's weeks count right days as weeks so we know it has a duality thing going on and if you take the a calculator and you take you take 200 289 times seven look at what it is 2023 well that should be no surprise right at first you're like whoa that's cool but that's exactly what this told us there's been 289 shemitah years since the birth of christ to where we are and the number in the greek in the bible is used one time and it's about the four years of the fig tree then cut it down whoa you see that's pretty cool well then our brother said <clears throat> if we go to 2023 check this out it, or sorry if we go to a, a very big deal date for us right a big deal date to everybody september 23rd 2017 and you add 289 weeks so these are weeks of years this is just simply straight up weeks of seven days what do you get april 8th 2023 that's pretty cool, isn't it? You know why? Because it's right in our wheelhouse, April 8th. This right here is the beginning of the 50 days. And I believe the moon is actually a little sooner. So it might actually play out that it's just a little bit sooner, guys, like a day, okay? I think the Hebrew calendar is off by a day, but we're just going according to this. If it's earlier, hallelujah, right? But I thought that was very interesting because this is right in the time frame of everything starting. 70 uh, uh 289 years of sabbaths 289 weeks of sabbaths i thought that was pretty cool so i wanted to share that so let me show you now this let's get into this this um if you're listening to me on uh, on faster speed you might want to slow it down because i'm playing this on 1.75 so you can get the gist of what he's talking about and what it is is you're going to hear briefly he has um, his guys in the government, and these guys in the government have guys talking to them from the CIA, and he's telling the whole story about it, and his government guy is talking about him because there, there's this armament taking place over in, uh, 
right over in uh, Ukraine and 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 stuff that seems to be flowing into Turkey and they're buying all these weapons that Americans are selling them and it's they're they're trying to understand um is Turkey really still the seat of Satan is this really the Gog of Magog that's about to take place so they think and so Stephen Ben Nun goes in and he's telling us about this and then he's going to go in and starts digging in before he gets back to his uh, contact in the government. And when he does, he starts digging up some stuff. And you could see by the title right here. So from the Dead Sea Scrolls reveals details. Look at this. Like an extraterrestrial Gog of Magog battle. Hello. When I saw this posted in the forum, I was just so excited to see it. Because it it's literally what we have been saying for the past several years and the only way to understand it is 14 years listen to what he says magog uh, and they look at the gog of magog war i can see why they would want to make sure these arms are going into turkey so that when they create this war against israel in the near future it will appear as if the gog of magog battle has taken place and turkey will be involved uh, iran would be involved they even want to say that russia is part of the gog of magog war there so all this is happening and all this is being prepared for a battle in the not so distant future but so i decided okay so i'm going to really i really decided to go and uh because of course i'm being asked about this uh they wanted to get my input on that so i began again to research the dead sea scrolls research what do we, what do we have written about gog of magog battle and as a result i come across some startling i mean startling uh, conclusions on Gog of Magog. And I want to share this one here with you here in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Uh, if you actually had the... I just keep thinking, come have a listen here, Steve. You'll be more blown away. The uh, This is from uh, superbook.org where I have the Dead Sea Scrolls where I'm able to um, uh, use this as one of the sources that I'm able to look at, page 156. And uh, I'm going to scroll up so you can see this. 1QM is the particular Dead Sea Scroll fragment that we're looking at, X-X1 uh, uh, or 10 uh, 11 uh, in Roman numerals there. And we're in the second paragraph. Uh, this is the... Here you go right here. This is your Hebrew version of that. And... We'll drop down here to read this for a moment here. For the battle is yours. With the might of your hand, their corpses have been torn to pieces with no one to bury them. Goliath from Gath and Gilat, and, 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 uh, Gilat giant, you delivered into the hands of David, your servant, for he trusted in your powerful name and not in the sword or spear, for the battle is yours. The Philistines you humiliated many times for your holy name. By the hand of our kings beside you, you saved us many times, thanks to your mercy and not by our own deeds, but by which we did wrong, nor by our sinful actions, for the battle is yours. And from you that power comes, and from our own being it is not our might nor power of our own hands which performs these marvels except by your great strength by your mighty deeds thus you taught us from ancient times saying and then he quotes the book of numbers a star will depart from jacob a scepter will be raised in israel i will smash the temples of moab i will destroy all the sons of seth i will come down from jacob and it will exterminate the remnant of the city the enemy will be his possessions and israel will perform feats by the hand of your anointed ones seers and decrees you taught us the times of the wars of your hands to fight to be glorious over our enemies to fail the hordes of belial the seven peoples of futility by the hand of the poor those you save with strength and success towards wonderful power so that melting heart became uh, a door to, to hope you shall treat them like pharaoh like the officers of the chariots of the red sea the stricken of the spirit you shall set aflame like a torch of fire and straw devouring wickedness without ceasing until the sin has been consumed from old you foretold disappointed times of the power of your hand against the sword uh, uh against excuse me against the kidding saying and they quote isaiah assure will fall by the sword uh, not of a man the sword of a human being will devour it we're delivering the hands of the poor, the enemies of the countries, in the hand of, the, of those who are prone to us and to fail the power ones of the nations to return to, to the reward uh, sin of their guilty heads. All right, now, uh, I probably read more than what I really need to read here. The point is, is they're quoting in Numbers chapter 24, the prophecy of Jesus Christ, when it talks about a star will depart from Jacob, a scepter will be raised in Israel. But notice what it says, and it will smash the temples of Moab and will destroy all the sons of Seth. Now, I used to be kind of bothered by this when it said the sons of Seth. Because Seth was the righteous seed of Ab uh, excuse me, of, uh, of Adam and Eve after Cain was killed by Abel. But then, as by, I really believe divine providence, as I've unraveled what I have unraveled today, I realize that in this regard here, it's not talking about the divine sons of Seth, but rather a different group altogether. Okay, so, you know, as I said, you know, it bothered me because of the issue of Seth here. And, um, but then as I began to do the research, I began to understand exactly why. Uh, Seth is included in this here. Now, we also have, let me just pull this one up here. Um, this is from 11Q13. And, um, and or that, that one actually, that's dealing with uh, the, the mountains. Uh, let me go back to what we have here, Gog. And let me find real quick. All right, the one part that I forgot to bring. Okay, okay, I got, I got it now. All right, so as we read in there, okay, as we're going down, and you know, it goes, it continues. Let me just go ahead and continue on. So yeah, there was a reason why. I did. So I sure would fall by the sword, of uh, not of a man, the sword, not of a human being, will devour it. Now that's interesting in itself. Ashur, or what we call it Syria, will fall by the sword of not a man. 
the sword of not a human being will devour it. That's pretty profound, friends. Look at that. For you will deliver into the hands of the poor the enemies of all the countries in the hand of those prone to the dust in order to fail the powerful ones of the nations. Wow. To return the reward of sin of their guilty heads and to pronounce the justice of your truthful judgment on every son of man to make an everlasting name for yourself among the peoples. The wars in order to show yourself great and holy in the eyes of the remainder of the peoples. So, comma, so. There, did you hear all that? Even that piece right there? He's going to get to the other part that really blew him away. But do you see, to, to make a name for yourself where all the people will know and all the nations and everything else. This is somebody coming from above in the Gog-Magog battle to destroy these enemies. You have to drop down, it continues on, that they know, now there's a blank spot, you shall carry out sentence on Gog and all his gathering that is gathered to him. Now if you paid attention to what I just read, Gog is coming down, but Ashur will fall by the sword of not a man. <laughs> and they're it's literally quoting right out of Isaiah 31.8. Let's just see out of curiosity, all right? Out of curiosity, let's go to the biblical uh, side. Let's see if the Isaiah that we have is saying that particular statement. Um, I'm just curious myself. Then shall Ashur fall with the sword, not yep, not of a man, and the sword, not of man, shall devour him. Then the fall Ashur, Becharev, okay, there's your sword, and the sword, lo ish. Becharev, lo adam. And the sword, not of man or human in this case here ish is a man adam being like the son of man or adam you know adam sent to a halunu it's going to literally the word is eat him or eat them in this case here i mean this is a supernatural battle that you're looking at <laughs> i love it you guys know why i had to share that <clears throat> as we go further into tonight's teaching you'll you'll see where where we're going to discuss it as we go along again in the whole timeline of events you know from in the beginning creation to the end of days connections but <clears throat> this i loved it because he's so excited he just realized that this gog of magog battle has somebody who he said in the as he was reading it in hebrew means son of man who is coming from above who is not just a man and he titles extraterrestrial gog of magog battle we know exactly what this means right how many times have we taught on this it's so exciting right in ezekiel 39 everybody thinks the ezekiel 39 war is what's coming with world war three it is not this is the battle of gog and magog at the end of seals okay Let's go to it in our trusted eSword. I love eSword. You guys know eSword, right? It's a free program, maybe a few bucks a year or something like that. Nothing expensive. And you can get KJV Plus. You can get all sorts of Bibles you can add across here. I use KJV Plus so you can get the definitions of the words, the strong concordance. It'll blow your mind because you're going to understand 10 times more at least than you ever have in your life when you get to use the convenience of having the concordance at your fingertips. But you see, what have we taught about the old Gog of Magog War, right? We know that this Gog of Magog War, this, this battle that happens in Ezekiel 39 is when the Lord returns feet, uh, uh, sorry, is when the Lord comes on heavenly Mount Zion at the end of the sixth seal. You heard it in his own in his own words right here, uh, 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 somebody who is not a man coming from above will devour them. And, and here everybody thinks the Gog Magog War is this World War III. No, that's World War III that's coming this year late in by summertime. It's not just, uh, it's not Gog Magog. It's World War III and it's called in, in, the, in the discourses of Mark, it's called the beginning. All these things are the beginnings of sorrows. That is the first two and a half years of tribulation. It's just World War III. This battle of Gog and Magog is when the Lord comes at the end of six years of seals. And you see them running into the mountains and hiding. Uh, hide is from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb for the day of his wrath has come. That's at the end of the sixth year of seals. And when we've proven it in here, We've even proven something that everybody avoids, right? Ezekiel 39, 9. And they that dwell in the cities of Israel shall go forth, and they shall set on fire and burn the weapons on both sides, 
and the bucklers and bows and the arrows and the hand staves and the spears, they shall burn them with fire seven years. You see, many people do, as much as most people think it's the beginning battle, there are some who think it's the battle at the end of tribulation. It's not, it's the battle at the end of seals. And then they'll, those that believe it's the end of tribulation because it's only seven years and think this is the battle at the end of it, they think they're going to burn seven years uh, during during uh, the millennial reign. Right? I've heard that from even Amar Safari. He believes that the seven years of burning of weapons is because they're going to use it for fuel during the first seven years of the millennial reign. No. You know why? Because this is the sixth year of seals. At the end of the sixth years of seals, when the Lord comes and it's the Gog of, Gog of Magog battle and he destroys all the enemy, then for the seventh year of seals, the weapons will be burning. The six years of trumpets, the weapons will be burning. That'll be seven years. And lo and behold, when you go look up scripture, it says that they will what? They will turn those plowshares back into weapons. Hello. When? Precisely seven years later, when the Lord then returns feet down on the Mount of Olives and destroys the enemy and binds Satan for a thousand years. It's absolutely spectacular <clears throat> when you understand the truth of the end of days is 14 years, not seven. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's, it's phenomenal. It's so exciting, right? Just like we said here, right? This is when they see him coming. When do you think this is when they see him coming? Let me show you. We've shared on this so many times because it's so spectacular. Behold, the days are coming when the Most High will deliver those who are on the earth. This is the beginning of the 50 days, which I believe is true feast of first fruits this year, 2023. And it says, and bewilderment of mind shall come over those that dwell on the earth and they shall plan to make war against each other, nation against nation, city against city, people against people, kingdom against kingdom. This is, you see, there's a there's the pre-trib escape, we call it. Then they shall plan. That planning will begin and the first battle, the first attack will happen. The, the first World War III attack will happen on Jerusalem. There will be an attack in Northern Israel first that will get people to start panicking. But it's 50 days later that nation against nation begins and it's at the red horse rider. And then it goes on to say, uh, and when these things come to pass and the signs occur, which I showed you before, meaning if you go back and you read through second Esdras, he's saying these things that I've already told you about take place. He's now talking about the events going on that took place during seals. It says, then my son will be revealed. Okay, whom you saw as a man coming up from the sea. And when all nations hear his voice, every man shall leave his own land and the warfare they have against one another and an innumerable multitude will be gathered together as you saw, desiring to come to conquer him. This is the battle of Gog and Magog. And when he is seen coming, what does it say? But my, sh my son shall stand on the top of Mount Zion. And Zion shall come to be made manifest to all people prepared and built as you saw a mountain carved without hands. Can you say hello, Daniel? Hello. And he, my son, will reprove the assembled nations for their ungodliness. This was symbolized by the storm. And you see, and he's going to devour them, symbolized by the flames, and will destroy them without effort by the law. As for you seeing him gather to himself another multitude that was peaceable these are the 10 tribes you see didn't didn't you hear him say uh for syria as well right the assyrians all representing syria and look at this <coughs> who are the 10 tribes i told you guys earlier that's the mark group that's the, that's the world the 10 tribes that have gone and mingled and mixed throughout the world <coughs> excuse me this is the great multitude coming in which is in the seventh year of seals. Do you want to be a part of those that were delivered from the earth at the beginning? Or do you want to wait till the end of seals and the Antichrist and false prophet and World War III? Do you know World War III is only called the beginning of tribulation? It's only the beginning. The earthquakes, the tearing apart, the, 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 the tsunamis, World War III, all of those things are only called the beginning of tribulation. 
When the Antichrist comes on the scene with the false prophet, it's then going to be a time worse than it has been since the creation to that point. You want to wait to be this group? If not, then keep diligently seeking the Lord. Keep in him. Be strengthened. Repent. Keep from sin. Lift each other up. Pray for others. And be a part of those delivered early. Early. It's so exciting. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I wanted to share that. I got like 70 tabs open, so I'm going to close some of these now. It's just, uh, it's just so exciting, guys. I really... <laughs> it's so exciting to see stuff like that, you know? You see people getting little tidbits here and there. It's happened over the years, you know? Somebody, they, there's a little tidbit here and a little tidbit there, but they don't know how it applies. But what they're seeing is true. It's correct. They're understanding what they're seeing, but they just don't know where or how it applies. And that's that was a great example because we know it is the Son of Man. It is the Lord coming down on heavenly Mount Zion. He's the one coming for the Gog Magog battle. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's so beautiful. <clears throat> Let me show you another little side note. Uh, we talked, of course, about these guys, you know, the Quadradecimen. This is, these are called the 14thers, right? Like Polycarp, he was a 14ther over uh, uh, a bishop over uh, Smyrna. We've talked at, at length about these guys. But the reason I'm bringing it up is because we know that their dispute and why they ended up being persecuted and why a, a number of them became martyrs was because they refused to go along with the church for Easter. They would not submit to the church and say that Easter, well, we'll just go along with you guys then and observe it on the following Sunday. They said, absolutely not. We learned from the disciples, some of them. We know that Polycarp learned from the apostle John himself. And he was a 14ther. Why were they 14thers? Because they held to the truth of the 14th day of Nisan, regardless, no matter what day of the week it occurred. And what are we? 14ers, right? The revelation of the 14 years, theirs, they were sticking to 14 days no matter what. We're teaching the truth of the 14 years no matter who comes against us, right? But why is this cool in relation to the 14 days? Well, check it out. There's the wheelhouse again, right in the wheelhouse again. We have the 289 equaling here. We have the 289 of, of, of Shemitah's years from Christ equaling 2023 right in this time. We have the 14ers that were sticking to the truth of the 14th of Nisan right in this time. Well, it gets better. <clears throat> Watch this. What about this? I was talking about this with the guys too the other day, um, and we were having this discussion about it. And I, what I'm about to share in this little bit is I'm not sure if we're gonna see something before the 50 days or if it's just gonna be in the midst of it, in the midst of the one week wedding, all right? This is what I'm talking about. You guys all know this. We haven't talked about it in a little bit, but it's the stone's throw. Okay, we know that the connection that we're looking for to the end of days is those that go right before she travails. Okay, before she travails, bang, she brought forth. We know that's connected to uh, um, uh, Isaiah 66, 7. We know it's connected to Revelation 12, verse 2. In verse 2 is when she starts to travail. So I wanted to share this because I'm curious if it just might be that we do see this, okay? We won't experience what's going to happen unless we're workers, okay? Unless we're chosen to be servants for the Lord, that remnant bride that stays, and when the Lord returns from his wedding, he has that meal with and then so forth, <clears throat> and then remain to work during seals. But we've talked about this stone's throw. You see, this is one of those things where it's only in Luke's gospel where you see that he's a stone's throw away when he kneeled down to pray okay when we follow this storyline what do we know about this storyline well then jesus is what betrayed and arrested so when was it in the storyline looking to his what 
he has a Passover meal, okay? After the meal, maybe it lasts uh, two, three hours, he goes up to the mountain to pray. <laughs> he says he's a stone's throw away. He's coming down. He gets taken into the hands of sinful men, All right? He's put in prison. They're spitting on him, doing whatever. They bring him to the, to the leaders. They crucify him. He has to be buried before sunset because this is the Sabbath. So he's buried before sunset. He's in the grave for one and about a half day because then he resurrects early in the morning, which means when he said he was a stone's throw away, it was somewhere around right here, Jerusalem time. Interesting, right? Interesting. Because we're looking at the escape, depending what side of the world, we're looking, we're, let's say from Jerusalem, okay? We're looking very early in the morning on the 7th. If the moon is off, then it would be on the 6th. But we're going to stick so that we're not going to confuse everything. We're going to stick with the Hebrew calendar. So early in the morning on the 7th is the beginning of the 50 days. It's the Feast of first fruits. It is in the beginning like Genesis 1. And it is the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the first fruits of the Feast of first fruits. That is his time, which is exactly 50 days before the Father's time, which has never changed in Taurus. So now the question is, knowing what we know, is the stone's throw going to be something we're going to see coming before the escape, but not experience? It's quite possible, right? If we go to Luke 21, this is why I'm going to show you two perspectives that we may see it. But even if we don't, don't be concerned. But if you're a worker, <laughs> be ready because you're going to see it and experience it. <clears throat> and here's why. You see, in Luke 21, 25, we have this. And there shall be signs in the sun and the moon and in the stars and in the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the seas and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear, for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now, you see, when I read this, I read this and I think that this isn't for the pre-trib group. I don't believe that it's going to be all those ready in Christ that are going to see him at this point. You see, because listen to all these things that are taking place. Listen to all these things that they're witnessing that are taking place. And yet when we come down to Luke 21, 36, it says, Watch ye therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. That's the pre-trib group. Verse 36 is the pre-trib group that is from the very beginning of the 50. So they're not going to experience this. So it would also make sense when reading this, that those that are seeing him come in a cloud are probably the workers, the remnant worker bride that knows he's coming for 40 days. And the reason I say it is because when we go to Matthew's discourse, he, then he's coming in a clouds, in the clouds, right? Which means in the clouds. That's the end of seals. They're going to see him coming in the clouds, right? Everybody freaks out when you go to Matthew. And what is that? <laughs> That's his coming at the end of the six year of seals. In Matthew, it's coming in, which means on the clouds, and that's when the whole world will see him. That's his coming feet down. So it would make more sense to me that this isn't the pre-trib escape, but it makes more sense to me that this is the beginning of his 40 days, okay? Which means after the one-week wedding. <clears throat> However, look what we read next. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draws nigh. So now you're now you're back kind of scratching your head about you're, you're like, well, whose redemption? Is this the redemption for everybody pre-trib? Or is this that 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 bride portion, that remnant bride where they're going to be ransomed? You see? So if it's after the escape, then that means all of this of that craziness is going to begin and take place within this period of time right here. And we've taught on this before, haven't we? We've taught on this. 
because we know that Ephesus and the reason Ephesus worshiped Diana is because a meteor came. And what are the end days Ephesus? It's that one week is the typology where it all begins for the apostles. And you've got that typology right smack dab where it should be in relation to when this is coming. Okay. But at the same time, if this redemption and this looking up, and this really is him coming pre trib at the start of the 50 days, then I believe what we just saw in Luke 22 is that coming right before Passover and that we would witness it and everybody, everybody who is pre-trib will witness this stuff, these things coming from above, which I believe relates to the meteor and maybe it breaking up, however that plays out. And we would witness this coming, not destroying yet, not, not breaking up, not all this stuff happening yet. But when we see these things and this shaking and all this stuff beginning to take place, the escape is happening. You see, so if we associate it with him saying that, you know, he's a stone's throw away, well, this would be the time of the stone's throw away. Okay? So he'd be saying he's a stone's throw away from coming to get us. Otherwise, if it is at the beginning of 50 and the stone's throw is being seen somewhere, I would say probably in here, then he would be saying he's a stone's throw away to when he's coming back on the eighth day for that remnant bride portion. You see, but in either case, the events of the chaos of what will ensue once it hits is going to be in this period of time. And again, this is something else that we've been able to prove out, right? So if, even if we go to Revelation 12, where we know this connection is, <clears throat> look at what we see. This again, when I read this one, you see here we were talking about what? The Revelation 12 sign, right? Here we are talking about the Revelation 12 sign and the Revelation 12 sign, this date is the 289 of weeks as the 289 of years is to 2023 from Christ's birth to Luke 13. That's just wild, you see? And here we are talking about the, the true Revelation 12, you see, the sign was in 2017. The sign to prepare, to help wake people up. The majority went back to bed, but not everybody. And look at what it says. And there shall appear, and there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, uh, clothed with the sun, the moon under her feet, and a crown of 12 stars upon her head. Well, where does the escape happen, guys? Listen to verse 2. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth and pain. That means, I've been saying this for five years. Between the end of verse 1 and the start of verse 2 is the escape of the bride of Christ. Because the pre-trib escape is before her pain, before she travailed. That's the pre-trib group. You see, what Stephen ben Danun also said as he was reading it was that the one with the scepter who will rule and reign, right? Well, look at that. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Hello. What happens? This is when he comes at the end of the sixth seal. And look at what it says. And her child was caught up. This is the rapture. The mystery is the pre-trib escape. The rapture is not a mystery. The pre-trib happens before verse 2. So if it happens before verse 2 and verse 1 is going to be seen, well, then guess what that does? That puts us seeing it before the escape. You see that? Verse 1 is taking place. So this is the time period of when he said it, Jerusalem time. He's a stone's throw away. Luke chapter 21 said these things, right, from 25 to 28. Then lift up your heads for your redemption draws nigh. There's the redemption. There's the delivery, like, like second Esdras. And then what happens? Well, then we know it's going to land and cause all of this chaos somewhere within this time frame. Because it's going to be during the time frame of Ephesus. And lo and behold... It will cause the chaos and hit after the bride is gone. 
and lo and behold 289 weeks from the sign is april 8th that's pretty wild so i believe there's a good chance we could be watching the skies from the evening of the fourth over here in the western hemisphere i'm in uh, mountain standard time i'm in calgary alberta <clears throat> all right so <laughs> This is really interesting stuff, guys. This is this is the time frame. This is the season and time that we're in. What about the other connection to this? Well, we know the Psalms in order. We've been talking about Psalms 18 forever. This never happened. This is prophecy. All right? Remember this? The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God, my strength, my buckler, my horn. The sorrows of death compassed me about. The sorrows of hell compassed me about, and they pre they prevented me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto <clears throat> my God. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him, even unto his ears. Now, do I think that what we're about to read is what the pre-trib group is going to experience? No. I believe at this point, the pre-trib group is gone. If we do see it, the whole world will see it. There's going to be some chaos. Men's hearts failing them because of it. Some things getting a little bit, you know, wonky and crazy. And then what happens? The escape's going to happen. And then the chaos of it hitting takes place. And that's what we're seeing here. Who then is he is calling out to him? And who then is going to get who then is going to get saved during this chaos? Well, who do we know after the escape? is here girding themselves, waiting for their Lord when he will return from the wedding. The disciple group, right? The apostles will already be gone out doing their, doing their work. It's the disciples that are waiting for their Lord when he will return from the wedding. So now listen to what it says about these guys. And he shook the earth and it trembled. The foundation, the hills were moved he was, um, and were shaken and he was wroth. <clears throat> Verse 9. He bowed the heavens and caved down, and darkness was under his feet. He rode upon a cherub and did fly. Yea, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness his secret place, a pavilion round about him, dark waters, thick clouds. At the brightness that was before him, the thick clouds passed, hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord also thundered in the heavens, and the highest gave his voice, hailstones coals and coals of fire. And he sent his arrows and scattered them, and shot his lightnings, and discomfited them. <clears throat> Listen to what happens. Then the channels of the waters were seen, and the foundations of the world were discovered at thy rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of thy nostrils. Something is going to tear open somewhere in the earth. There's going to be a massive tearing open, where it says the foundations of the earth are going to be discovered. He sent from above, he took me out of many waters. Here it is. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me. Who are those who are going to be hated? The workers, right? For they were too strong for me. They prevented me in the day of my calamity. Verse 19, he brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. The Lord rewarded me according to the righteousness and the cleanness of my hands. He hath recompensed me. You go down and you see, see from the cleanness of my hands. And listen what happens to this group. Verse 27. and Verse 27 through 29. For thou shalt save the afflicted people and will bring down high looks. For thou will light my candle. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. For by thee I have run through a troop. And by my God I have leapt over a wall. Remember, they're going to be able to bend a bow of steel. Guys, when does he come as a light in the darkness? When does he come to give people his light so that they can go out during the time of darkness? He's doing it to his worker bride. The seals workers, the Smyrnas. And there they are. He's going to light their candle and they will be enlightened during the darkness.
and they will have powers and abilities as we know, as we've shared before. Just wild stuff, man. This is all the timing that we're in. And of course, what else do we know takes place? All, everything that I'm sharing so far is just our beginning. Our beginning. From the beginning of the potential of the stone's throw to the escape, of, which is the beginning of the 50 days in here. The Lord returning, so this chaos taking place. What else do we know takes place at the beginning of the 50 days? Isaiah chapter 9, right? Isaiah chapter 9, we've covered it many times as well. When he will have first lightly afflicted two lands, two of the northern lands, right? We've talked on this. This is, I believe it's going to be, um, what is it, Tel Aviv and Haifa in the northern part of Israel. This is going to be the light affliction in northern Israel by, by Iran. And then what? Then the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. This is when he comes as the son of man forty uh, uh, after seven days wedding. And he's here on the eighth day. And there he is. A child is born unto us. It's the typology of his 40 days starting. And he comes to bring light. What do we know he's going to do with that light? He's going to rescue his workers that were girded about, ready for him when he knocks, saves them. And he enlightens them to be the light to go out in the world when he's done his 40 days. And then what happens at the end of 40 days? Bam, there's that Syria attack that begins the 14 years. You see, this isn't the Syria being destroyed at the end of seals or, or, or the, 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 the leader, the Antichrist type. This is the attack that is allowed by the Lord to have the Jews removed from the land for the next seven years so that the land can have its rest before they build again. The Lord God will not build the temple on that des desecrated land. It must rest for seven years. Check this out. So everything we're talking about, oops, I clicked on it again, is the potential of the stones throw here or um, it will be after the escape. So this is the escape regardless. This is the escape time pre-trip, the beginning of the 50 days. If this is the escape, the stone's throw is going to be seen and land within this period of time. Or it'll be seen here by everybody, then the escape, and then it'll still land somewhere in this time. Psalms 18. Then the Lord returns on the eighth day after his seven-day wedding, his Gentile bride. He returns on the eighth day. He enlightens them. He's here for the 40 days. He rescues them because of all the chaos that was happening during those eight days. You following? It gets pretty wild. Israel in the north will have been attacked. They're going to need to settle things down. Million, tens of millions of people will have vanished. Meteors, the, the earth shaking craziness going on. Israel attacked in the north. Then they're going to need to settle things down, you see? And then the Son of Man will be here for 40 days, as we've shared. What do we know <clears throat> about when he comes for 40 days? Well, let's rehash this real quick. In Luke chapter 14, this was part of the big reveal recently. We know that there's a wedding parable feast in Luke. There's nothing in Mark, and there's one in Matthew. They're, very, they're, they're, they're different though, right? And only Luke has the parable of the great banquet, which is after the wedding. We know that this wedding is the pre-trib wedding, that there are those who are going to be called. We should all sit in the lowest room, according to what Luke tells us here. And if you're invited to go up to the higher room, then it'll be a great honor. But do not go to that higher room and be embarrassed having to be sent back down. All right. We've shared on this many times. When this wedding is over, what does he do? He's coming back and he's going to have a banquet meal with all his remnant worker bride. He is going to have a meal when he returns on the eighth day where he is going to serve them and eat with them. It only happens to the Luke group of workers who were those that you would call the first watch. Those that will be with them for 40 days, and those 
um, who will remain to work for him as servants during seals. This is them right here. We've shared on them many times. It doesn't say first watch. It's already implied because then it's second watch and third watch. It's only the first watch that when he returns from the wedding and he knocks that they had better open immediately. And if they're ready and they're watching when he comes and he knocks and they open, he's going to sit down and eat with them and serve them. That only happens to the Luke group. All right. So we, we've covered that, man. We, we've got this stuff nailed down. We've got incredible, incredible detail. But let's see some more things connected into this time. <clears throat> Watch this. Let's go to the book of Jubil uh, Jubilees. You see, this was something that I was concerned with at first because, you see, one of the things that could be a possibility, as we've discussed, is maybe the moon still hasn't yet been accounted for. But if the moon isn't accounted for because we know the moon is off and we've been able to count it out, well, if the full moon is here, how would being down here when you're no longer in Pisces, but now you're going into Ayar, into Aries? It, it doesn't really fit. I think the fact that the Lord God had already predetermined 50 days before the 14 years, he is clearly already accounted for the sun, but I believe within it, he has already accounted for the moon as well. So I don't believe we're going to need to do a, an extra count for where the moon should be and all of those things. I believe it's already been accounted for. But there is, you know, potentially that possibility. But here's why I'm bringing that up. This is from the Book of Jubilees. Okay, again, there's Haran. Who's Haran? That, that first brother, right, of uh, Abraham, or the that youngest. So, and Israel arose from Haran. Okay, this is a place. From his house at the new moon of the third month. Okay, new moon, third month. Uh, there's Nisan. New moon, third month is right back in here. Okay, right back at the beginning of Savan. Okay which is the later part of March. And it says, um, the third month, and he came by the way of the well of the oath and offered a sacrifice to God, his father, Isaac, on the seventh of this month. Why is that interesting? Well, because what are we looking for? We're saying this is the Feast of Weeks, right? Right in here. Well, could there be a day difference? Could there be that little bit of a difference where the count really isn't exact? Yes. And here it is right here. On the seventh, we have here in the book of Jubilees, on the third month when he offered on this month. Now listen to this. And Jacob remembered the dream which he had dreamed at Bethel, and he feared to, uh, to descend down to Egypt. And while he was thinking that he would send word to Joseph that he should come to him and that he would not go down, he remained there seven days. Okay, so now he does this one sacrifice, which I believe is connected, okay, to, to the beginning time. And then what does it say? Then he waited seven days, okay? Takes him into this time. And it says, remain seven days, that he might see the vision, whether it should remain or go down. Now listen to this. And he celebrated the harvest festival of the first fruits with old grain. See, we've talked on this in the past, right? And on the 16th day, the Lord appeared. So what are we talking about? Who do we know that this relates to? So then by the 15th is when this, when this event was observed. You see, so now, you see, it's got me thinking, uh, what about this time? The only way to account for these things is when we account for the moon. But we can clearly see something did start here. But this is the first fruits of the weed harvest. The old grain, right? That lay a type. Well, guess who this would reference, guys? The remnant worker bride. His lay a bride that followed him, that was, that was always by his side, that he didn't want... Right? Like we read in Judges 15. This is all that 50-day connection. <clears throat> From it possibly starting here with the stone's throw, but most certainly starting in here, going to here.
This is an extremely, extremely exciting time, guys. It's so awesome. What does all this take us to? Doesn't this all take us to the beginning? Don't we know now that the beginning is the feast of first fruits to the Son and to the Father? It is Taurus 50 days later. Do you know how incredible it is to now know the beginning from the end? To literally have the revelation and to know that it was confirmed and given to us by the Holy Ghost? It's so incredible. Well, I want to remind you guys of another Apocrypha book. I want you guys to remember this one. This is from the Gospel of Thomas, okay? The Apocrypha book from the Gospel of Thomas. Listen to this. Starting in verse 17, Jesus said, I shall give you that no eye hath seen, and what no ear hath heard, and what no hand has touched, and what has never occurred to the human mind. Now listen to this. Guys, We've talked, we've shared this in the past, but now consider those last two videos and everything we're about to go into with all of this, how the beginning and the end has revealed the beginning. Listen, it's, I think in part, this is talking to us in a, in a, in a literal sense. There's the spiritual sense of understanding Christ being the beginning, <clears throat> right? And those that won't taste death at the pre-trip. But there's also a literal, just like um, Isaac Newton had said, that in the end of days, there will be a group of men that will seek the literal interpretations of the end of days. <clears throat> Excuse me, that's what we have. Listen to this, verse 18. The disciples said to Jesus, tell us how our end will be. Jesus said, have you discovered then the beginning that you look for the end? For where the beginning is, there will the end be. Blessed is he who will take his place in the beginning. Sound familiar? He will know the end and will not experience death. Brothers and sisters, can you say that? Of any other group having the revelation of the beginning from the end? Not just me, all of us here understanding these things. That was awesome. That was such an exciting one to share. I, I just love it, you know. This, <laughs> this stuff is so awesome. Let me share you another piece as we go into this. How many times have we spoken on Leviticus 19, right? At the beginning, I was saying there was from, from three years, the fourth year, and then the fifth year is theirs. And that's from when they also became a government, from when they planted. But what did I also just share? And what have we been sharing recently again? We know, as we've been saying for two and a half years, the Lord God counts from Taurus. Sivan is the month of Taurus. The Lord God's end of year and beginning is at the Feast of Weeks in Taurus every single year okay so if we go to whoops <clears throat> so if we go to leviticus and we now understand where the lord god is counting from and it was three years so when they came into the land but they had to plant then they had their government right and the lord god is not counting from nisan for himself he's counting from taurus and we count the four years and then five years from Taurus in 1949 and count 70 years, 2023 is the end of 70 years in Taurus. But do you remember what we taught on this? The new year of trees, right? We taught on the new year of trees. This is all about the new year of trees. <laughs> but guess what? Do you realize that when this was given, when Leviticus all the way back then, what was the beginning of the year? Taurus. What was Taurus? Spring. But because everything sped up, 
what did the Jews do? Well, they moved up to B'Shavat by two months, right? You want me to prove it to you? Look at this. Look at the word spring. This is Tuba Shavat. Remember where Tuba Shavat was, guys? Tuba Shavat was back here on the 15th day of the 11th month. What is this festival all about? Right? We know it's all of the New Year of Trees and the Almond Tree and everything else. Listen to this. Tuba Shavat is associated with the start of spring in Israel. In the middle of the month of Shavat is traditionally regarded as the time when spring begins in Israel. Tuba Shavat was a folk festival to welcome the reemergence of spring. Okay? All over, the, associated with the start of spring. One, two, three, four. On Tuba Shavat to celebrate the return of spring. Let me ask each and every one of you. Is it spring in the middle of winter? Do you know that the Chinese, even with their with their festival, right, their, their Chinese Lantern Festival, they call it the beginning of spring. Why did, why did the Gregorian calendar move it to January? Because they knew the sun was two months off. So they adjusted to January from March. So everybody has a quote-unquote beginning of the year, now what seems in the middle of winter, and they all call it the beginning of the year or spring. Do you get it? It's not spring. <laughs> Hello? Because why? Because the sun is two months off. Taurus used to be the beginning, right? So if Taurus is the beginning and the Lord God is telling us Taurus is the beginning, well, where would Tuba Shavad actually be? If everything's two months off, the 15th day of Shavat, which is the 11th month, there's the 11th month. There's the 15th day of the 12th month, which is tomorrow. And where's this? Two months later, on the 15th day of Nisan, to the Lord God is what? The 11th month, 15th day. To the Lord God, this is actually Tuba Shavat. Do you now recall everything we were talking about with Tuba Shavat in the past? Everything that it meant to the count of the New Year of Trees? We were so fixated on where the Jews have it, but we know the entire world in their own ways have moved up their spring by two months to account for where it is because they were running from spring, not from Taurus. So they moved it all the way up into January, February, -ish, right? Isn't that awesome? So everything we were talking about in relation to Tuba Shavat is what? Well, remember the last video? The beginning of the beginning. Weren't we looking for two ends and two beginnings? The end to the beginning, right? They bring it into the Lord. Hello. They bring it into the Lord, and then what do you have? A new beginning. What happens in, in Taurus to the Lord God at true Feast of Weeks? It's the year's end and the beginning. One's the beginning of 50 days. The other one is the beginning of the 14 years. We still have Tuba Shavad in play, guys. But only in the revelation of two months off. We've, we've experienced this enough, haven't we? We've gone through this enough over the last, what, couple of years. We know it's two months. We just didn't know exactly how the Lord was playing this two months with the 50 days. And now we've got it in order. This is awesome stuff, guys. Look at this. This, this came about because our sister Claire had shared some things with me. And... There was a bunch of stuff in relation to beginning, and she shared on a number of other things. But remember this word, the beginning, right? Let's go to it real quick. In Luke chapter 1, Luke chapter 1, John chapter 1, Mark chapter 1, it's awesome. All right, here it is right here. In the beginning, from the beginning. What do we know, guys? What do we know? I just shared it. There are two beginnings, right? 
This is a beginning for our Lord and Savior. And it'll be beginning of the 50 days, the beginning of everything, the Luke group. And then this is the beginning to the Father. So every Taurus Feast of Weeks is the beginning to the Father. Okay? But at the start of it all, we know there's a escape, like the Son of Man, 50 days earlier beginning, which is all connected to in the beginning. So we have what? We have, we have a pre-trib 50-day beginning, and then we have the 14 years beginning, and then you could say every year or every even seven years after that, you have beginning, beginning, beginning. You see what I'm saying? Well, check this out. In Luke 24, 21, for then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world. That's kind of interesting, right? Since the beginning of the world. What, what, what portion do you think that is? I would say probably more so the fleshly portion, right? When time began. Listen to this. So, so what would this beginning be? This would probably be the, the beginning of trumpets. Okay? Now, what about this? The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Well, this is Mark chapter 1. What do we know from Mark chapter 1? Mark chapter 1, verse 1, the beginning is the beginning of the 50 days. The escape has happened in maybe the 50, even 40 days of the Son of Man before what? Before then the disciples choosing and everything else in the 14 years beginning. We shared this just recently. So the Luke one, uh, the Mark 1 beginning is the Son of Man at the, at the pre-trib escape connection. It's that beginning. It's the same with the, the John chapter 1. Well, look at that. John chapter 1, verse 1. Isn't it interesting that John chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, it has the beginning twice. Some of you probably got it right away, right? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And then it goes on to talk about the light portion. Because this is all the first two verses of creation. And it just so happens you have two beginnings. <laughs> two beginnings right here. Two beginnings to explain Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 that says in the beginning. Why? Because we know that this in the beginning represented two beginnings. They were one. They were one in the beginning of creation. It was the Father and the Son. It was in the beginning, in Christ, God created. So Christ, the Son, was given full range of everything the Father had shown him to go out and create and do it all. They were both together at the beginning. But now, they're separated by 50 days because of what the Sun and Moon have done. So what do you got? You got 50 days of in the beginning being the Feast of First Fruits. And then you got the Father's beginning where it all started, which is Taurus. And it just so happens, John, in describing his in the beginning, could have just said it once. But no, just so happens to have said them twice over two verses that represent the two verses in creation, in the first creation of the Spirit. That's awesome. I love it. There's so many of these connections in here. Check this one. Um, Mark 13, okay? These are the beginnings of sorrows, okay? So these beginnings of sorrows, it starts with what? Listen to what it says, Mark 13, 8. For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Didn't we just read that in the Apocryphus? What, in, what do we know happens? Okay, and they shall plan to make war against each other. Nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, place against place, people against people. When does that begin? 14 years. It's, it's the beginning from Taurus 1. These are the beginnings. So that from when it begins till when this portion of these things end, which is going to take two and a half years, it's all from the beginning. But not the beginning of the 50. This is the beginning of the 14 years. Listen to this. 
for in those days shall be affliction such as was not from the beginning of the creation. <laughs> you see, what did Matthew say? The world. Isn't that wild? Because Luke's, Mark's group is what? The portion of light. The one that's represented by the days of creation. And when did that begin? The beginning of the 14,000 after the in the beginning two verses when jesus was then made light when the lord was made light that's the beginning of the 14 years that's the other beginning you got the luke 1 beginning which is again the beginning of the 50 days and it goes in in luke chapter 1 to talk about john the baptist's birth and then eight days and then the 40 of the son of man in luke chapter 2 it's riddled throughout it's so exciting uh, what was another one? First Colossians 18. And he is the body. Uh, he is the head of the body of the church, who is the beginning from the firstborn of the dead, that in all things he must have preeminence. Well, when was he the beginning? At, in the beginning, the beginning of the 50 days. You see, so we've got two beginnings. One of them is a distinct one in Christ as the feast of first fruits and the other one is the beginning of 14 years or as a beginning of the you know the 14 at seals or the seven at trumpets it's all throughout this you can see oh in first peter how about this in first john 1 verse 1 that which was from the beginning which we have heard which we have seen with our eyes which we have looked upon and which we have handled of the word of life. What do we know about the first John guys? They're the disciple workers. They will be there with them handling. They were there and they were part of what? The in the beginning at the start of 50 days. All throughout these connections to Christ, either Christ or the father, and most of them are Christ at the beginning of 50 days, but the ones within the, the 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 mark in matthew discourses are their portion of tribulation that begins at 14. it's awesome or begin at the seven of of trumpets in the beginning revelation one i'm the alpha and omega the beginning and the ending yep see this one's pretty cool too revelation 13 14. and unto the angel of the church of the laodiceans write these things say it the amen the faithful and true witness the beginning of the creation <laughs> why because it's laodicea it's laodicea <clears throat> what do we know about the laodicean church we know it's the final of the seven and when the 14 years begin the cycle is going to start over again right so what is this it's the end of the cycle so if you relate to it in the end of days, what is this? It'll be the end of 14 years. You see? Where the beginning is, the end is. It's always Taurus, 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 except for the ones in Christ. That is 50 days in the beginning as the Feast of first fruits. It's awesome. It was just a great little additional nugget to go in and to be able to go into literally half or more of these and to be able to distinguish which beginning it was it every single time it just fits over and over and over and over again let's see this now so now knowing these things let's go into this creation difference some of these parts we've talked on before right but it's just so exciting to be able to dig into these things and to show them. So I spent a good chunk of, of time to be able to show you guys, you know, other little nuggets and other little tidbits that we can add that this is 100% the time when all action is about to break loose. But we know the 14 years will then begin at true feast of weeks. All right. And it is in Taurus. It is 50 days later. And so when we followed all this, what was this that we've been talking about 
in all this focus has all been to start the creation portion, right? It was all about this right here. The group going pre-trib, the the 50 days that it represents, the the the, the pre-trib group and a group that remains of the remnant bride that he will then have a meal with after his Gentile bride wedding. He'll come for 40 days. He's going to rescue them from these devastations that are going to take place. He's going to set them in a large place. They're going to have their meal and they're going to dine. He's going to serve them. They're going to be empowered. He's going to open their understanding. They're going to follow him during these 40 days while the apostles are already out doing their thing. All of this was connected to in the beginning. It's all about the 50 days that comes first. That is referenced and revealed to us by the fact that it's Feast of First Fruits. And then the Father's portion begins the 14 years. When does that 14 years begin? And God said, let there be light, and there was light. Who was that light? Of course, Christ was that light. He had to be that light, right? Because the two great lights one to rule the day and one to rule the night weren't in existence yet till the fourth day, which is pretty awesome in itself. And you're going to see why. These connections from creation is what it is such a mind-blowing understanding to be able to see that in these, in these creations stories of the beginning of Genesis 1 and 2 is the entire story of the end of days. It's, it's that heavy, it's that deep, it's that filled with revelation. And this was the Luke portion, including Luke's discourse that represents the 50 days like we were sharing in the previous video. Okay? When he comes as light to shine a light in the darkness, which he does for 40 days, hello, what does he do that we just saw in Psalms 18? He lights them so that they could be his light during the time of seals when he's done after 40 days. That is his remnant Leia bride worker type. Okay. And then what do you see? See day one, day two. For those that don't know, and you're saying, what is he talking about? These are days. The Lord said these are days. So when male and female are created at the sixth day, Oh, those are days. So it was only the sixth day. It was really Adam and Eve. No, it wasn't. You see, 2 Peter 3.8 told us these things. 2 Peter 3.8 told us right here. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years. So to the Lord, those days of creation were as one day. But to us, if we were living in time back then, they would have each been a thousand years. So really, you could say it was 7,000 years in those days of creation. But to the Lord, they were a day. And then what? You have a comma N, which means separate, but you can add them together. So it would be like seven days or 7,000 years. And then what? From Adam, we're living in the thousands of years, but to the Lord, they're only a day. And yet we're living in thousands, but to him, they're only a day. So you would have seven days to the Lord and seven days to the Lord. Or you would have a 7,000 to us, it would have been like, and now we're living in the thousands to us. So it'd be 7,000 and 7,000. Hello. Why do you think the Bible is filled with 7-7 seven, seven, and 7 times 7 and 7 times 7 Sabbath, 7 times 7 years? 7-7-7, seven, 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 a 7 on its own, and then two more 7s with it. I told you, it's the revelation of the end of days of that there is zero doubt it's exciting man i'm telling you so now watch this look what happens here in uh genesis chapter one in genesis chapter one so we saw he became the light and when we know he comes he's shedding his light in the darkness right all those things and then look what happens you have day one, day two. What do we know is happening during this time in relation 
to the beginning of the end of tribulation, to the end of days, the first two and a half years of seals, right? It's World War III. We know that what? We know that in the fourth year, they're going to have built the foundation. They're going to lay the foundation in Israel while Israel's removed. A group is going to be brought back and the foundation will have been laid by the fourth year. Look what happens. You have the third day, okay? There was the lights and the firmament. And then it says, um, uh, da, 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 that was the third day. Fourth day, of course, starts in Genesis 1.14. There were lights to divide the day from the night. They were placed in the firmament. And then what did he do? <laughs> he made two great lights, one to rule the day and one to rule the night. When did all this happen? Fourth day. Fourth day. He created what? Well, all the stars, right? And what? The sun and the moon. We've shown that in this creation of the sun and the moon, you can go to the discourses now in Mark. So the 50 days is done. Luke's discourse is over. It was only represented by those two verses in the beginning. And all of these connections that we were showing are connected to it within that 50-day period of time. Now we're talking about uh, Taurus starting. Taurus at the Feast of Weeks and the 14 years beginning. Okay? When the 14 years begin, Mark's discourse, nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and it's going to start from the beginning, which is Taurus. Okay? They're going to persecute you, come against you, you're going to have this abomination of desolation that takes place. <clears throat> and you're going to see false Christs and false prophets. That timing is awesome. Because what we're seeing with the sun and the moon is what? We talked about it not too long ago, right? The church. Rome. Rome coming back on the scene, right? probably is the false prophet, whoever it's going to be, they're all about sun worship, right? It's all about the sun. And who are the Arabs? They're all about the moon. It's all about the crescent moon. That's for the Arabs. And what is, what, what happened at the fourth day? The sun and the moon. What are the two that went off course? the sun and the moon. What did we see in Mark's discourse? Okay, in Mark's discourse, chapter 13, seven years of tribulation have started now in Taurus of this year. And it's going to begin with the red horse rider, nation against nation. It's going to be the attack on Jerusalem. And then everything's going to break out from there. All of these things are only the beginning. And then persecution is going to pick up, okay? Brother shall betray brother and mother, son, father, daughter, all that stuff. Then there's going to be the abomination of desolation. We're going to talk on these things. But then look who shows up. Meaning for the first about half of tribulation of seals, no antichrist and no false prophet on the scene. See that? There was no antichrist and no false prophet on the scene yet. Are they on the scene? Yeah, probably but with the power and the authority as the false prophet and as the antichrist? No. Look at when we see them here in Mark's discourse. Where we see them in the timing of the discourse is purposeful. We don't see them here wielding their authority as false prophet and false Christ. It's not until the time of the abomination of desolation and then you see it. You know why? Because they represent what? They're representing the sun and the moon that have fallen. You see, the sun and the moon, it says they were placed in the firmament, right? And they're no longer in the firmament. That's why they've gone off course. Hello. So... When is this created? In the fourth day. Okay, so right after three years. So it could be between three years and one day to the end of the fourth year. <clears throat> and 
And look at what we see in Daniel. In Daniel, we see the abomination of desolation in Daniel 11. In Mark chapter 13, this is something that most people have never understood, which is be simply because they don't understand who the Gospels are speaking to. If you understand who the Gospels are speaking to, you're going to realize that there's an abomination spoken of slightly different in Mark's compared to the abomination of desolation spoken of differently in Matthew's. This abomination of desolation in Mark is the abomination of desolation in Daniel chapter 11. You got it? In Daniel chapter 11. Let's go to Daniel chapter 11. Watch this. Daniel chapter 11, and we're about, oh, what, three years to four years in there in the typology? Listen to what it says. And at the appointed time, he shall return and come from the south and said, covenant. Verse 30, for the ships of Chittim shall come against them. Therefore, he shall be grieved and return and have indignation against the holy covenant. So shall he do. And he shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsake the holy covenant. And arms shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and they shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. This is not in the prophetic about the temple being built. This is about the time of seals where it is still the time of the Gentiles. The Jews have been removed from the land and it is now the end of the age for the Gentiles for the next seven years of seals. This mid time of seals <coughs> is when man in flesh is still the temple of God. It is all about the mark of the beast being placed where it ought not. This is the mark one. It is the mark of the beast in the flesh that is still the temple. All right. Just like Moses, the first temple, it was covered in skins and it was carried around. What are you covered in skins and you move around? That's this one here. And listen to what it says. Such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do not know their God, uh, th sorry, that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. And they that understand among the people shall instruct many, yet they shall fall by the sword. Remember that. They shall fall by the sword <clears throat> and by flame, by captivity and by spoil many days. Um, now, when they shall fall, they shall be hoping with little help, but many shall cleave to them with flatteries. Verse 35. And some of them, this is the Smyrna workers during seals, okay? And some of them of understanding. Does that ring a bell? Who have we shown are those who are given understanding? It's the seals workers, remember? In Luke chapter 24, then he opened unto them their understanding. Isn't it amazing? Listen to this. Some of them, <coughs> excuse me, of understanding. And what are we talking about? The time of when the Antichrist takes his power. Check this out. In Luke chapter 24 is the only place you see this in the, in the Gospels to this group. Remember this? In verse uh, da, 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 down here. He opens unto them what? Then opened he their understanding. Remember that? That they might understand the scriptures. Remember this word for understanding? So only this group, which is the Smyrna disciple group. So look at this. So this group is the group that has understanding. But it said some of them who have this understanding will die. Watch this. Revelation chapter 2, Church of Smyrna. I know thy works and thy poverty. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Uh, behold, the devil shall cast some of you, there's that same term, into prison that you might be tried and you shall have tribulation 10 days, but be thou faithful unto death. And I will give thee a crown of life. Some of you. Who are the some of you that are workers? 
the exact same group from Luke chapter 24 that are being given understanding. And if you remember that teaching of those who are given understanding, what are they given understanding of? Remember the word for understanding? Those who have understanding, what was it? Right here, the one right here, Luke 13, 18. The only place that this understanding was found in the gospels and speaking to these groups of people was the one from Luke chapter 24, the group that follow him as the Smyrna group for 40 days and then go out during seals to whom he had opened their understanding. And what are we talking about here? The literal understanding of the end of days, time of the Antichrist, to Mark's discourse, the literal connection, the literal connection to the first abomination of desolation. It's right here. Some of them of understanding <coughs> shall fall to try them and to purge them and to make them white even to the time of the end because it is yet for an appointed time. Listen to what he does now. And the king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every little g God. And he shall speak marvelous things against the uppercase G of little g gods. This is Christ over the little g gods, right? And shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished. You see, <clears throat> this is the antichrist coming into power and causing that first abomination of desolation which is the one from mark's discourse All right let's look at this <clears throat> remember in zechariah 4 we can prove the timing because of zechariah 4 in zechariah 4 what happens zerubbabel Zerubbabel, Zechariah 4, verse 19. The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of the house, of this house, and his hands shall also finish it. Remember, we showed that he's one of the two witnesses. He comes back, so he's laid the foundation with those that he brought in to rebuild it, and they only get the foundation laid during seals. Why do you think it ends? Because now the Antichrist has received his power. Now the mark has come about. And now it's a hunt for the Christians. Everything that was taking place in Jerusalem is now halted. Remember, we proved this out <coughs> in uh, 1 Kings 6. Oh, yeah, 1 Kings chapter 6. Verse 37 and 38. In the fourth year was the foundation of the house of the Lord laid. So if you look at it as the 14 years of tribulation, the fourth year from when it started, the foundation is laid in the month of Ziph. In the 11th year, which is sometime in the about three and a half years into trumpets, which is what? In the 11th year, 10 and a half years total. In the month of Bull, which is the eighth month, was the house, fin was the house finished. Throughout all the parts thereof, and according to all the fashion of it, so was it seven years in building. What does that mean? Seven years of seals started. In the fourth year, the foundation was laid. By the end of seals, all they got finished was the foundation. The Lord comes at the end of seals. Trumpets is about to start after he destroys the enemy. I'm going to show that. He destroys the enemy. And at the start of the eighth year, they start rebuilding. Ten and a half years into all of tribulation, or three and a half years, which is in the eleventh year. The, 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 the temple is now rebuilt. The city and the street was being rebuilt. In total, it was seven years in rebuilding. And it takes you to ten and a half years from the beginning of seals to mid-trumpets. That's why it's the 11th year and the fourth year of the foundation. It's a beautiful thing to understand. <clears throat> it's so exciting. Which then takes us back into Revelation chapter 13. In Revelation chapter 13, a sip of coffee. In Revelation 13, you see, this is when we see the beast getting his power and his, his authority. Look at what he has. 
10 horns, right? 10 crowns, right? Seven heads and 10 horns and upon his horns, 10 crowns. We see that what? He's now taken over the authority from the leopard who is like the central command of the, of the world system that's coming. We have uh, the feet of the bear. So he's taken over the army of Russia and his mouth as the mouth of the lion. He's taken over Assad as the mouthpiece. And the dragon is going to give him his power, his seat, and great authority. As one of his heads was wounded, they wondered after the beast, who was able to make war, you see, against him. And what does he do? Everything he does is speaking blasphemies. Here, he does not claim to sit in the throne of God, above God. Here, his claim <coughs> is speaking. He speaks great things against the Father. He speaks great things against the Lord. In Daniel 7, he speaks, or 11, he speaks great things against the God of the little g gods. And what is he given? Power to continue 42 months. What do we know happens during this time? It was given to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. Hello. And power was given him over all nations, kindred, tongue, and nations. Then what happens? <clears throat> then the second beast, the false prophet comes. And when the false prophet has come and was there and saw the deadly wound, did all these things and was healed, what ended up happening? Then we know the mark of the beast comes. Who has the understanding in these days of the mark of the beast? The seals workers. The seals workers. They will understand it. They will keep people from it. People will be saved and, and endure what is going to come against them as saints because the power and the authority is now given to the antichrist isn't that exactly what we're looking at here in mark's discourse how long is this going to last you see abomination of desolation right woe to those who get suck it's going to be the worst time ever up to this point <laughs> right since the creation and what do we see False Christs and false prophets. False Christs and false prophets are represented by the sun and the moon who fell. And they were represented at the fourth day of creation. Just so happens the exact same typology in the end of days to the 14 years as 14,000. The 14 days, uh, the 14 years as 14,000 or 14 days to the Lord. It was on the fourth day that they were created. Hello. Temple starts getting built, it stops because not only because he just got the power and authority, but now he's turning his attention to the Christians and the people who would be saved by Christ. And that's why you see false Christs and false prophets. How long does this last? Well, we know this only lasts until the end of the sixth seal, right? We know this is only go to the end of the sixth seal. Because we see right here in the sixth seal, which, by the way, for anybody that's new, it's not one year, one seal, one year, one seal, one year, one seal. They'll be released. They're intermingled. Some will stop. Some will start. Okay? The, but by the end of the six seals, it'll be the end of six years. And look at what we see at the end of the sixth seal. It starts in verse 13. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree doth cast her early figs or untimely figs, when is shaken by a mighty wind. The kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every freeman hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said unto the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sits on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb for the great day of his wrath is come and who shall stand? This isn't the end of tribulation. This is the end of seals. This is simply the end of seals. Look at this. Let's go into Daniel chapter 7. So what is this like in creation? Watch this. Okay, look at what we see. We see that 
Um, the lion had the authority first. That's Assad, who's going to destroy Jerusalem. Then we've got the bear, who World War III then breaks out, and it's Russia. You have the leopard, which is going to be through uh, probably through Germany and that whole EU section with, uh, with the beast system, the control center. Then, when the Antichrist takes hold over all of them. And the fourth beast shall be more strong and great iron teeth. It devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet, with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the other beasts that were before it, and it had 10 horns. Hello. We know that he's going to have the power and authority to continue 32, uh, 42 months. The final three and a half years of seals to the end of six years. And look what happens. Look what happens when he's done those 42 months. Daniel 7, verse 9, I beheld till the thrones were cast down and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow and his, the hair of his head as pure wool and his throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as a burning fire. Remember what Stephen Ben Danun said? This, like an extraterrestrial Gog of Magog? This is the Exodus, <coughs> or sorry, the uh, Ezekiel, uh, sorry, Second Esdras. This is the second Ezra's, him now coming on heavenly Mount Zion, that, that stone that became a great mountain. This is him coming to destroy the enemies. This is the Ezekiel 39, Gog and Magog war. After the Antichrist has had his 32 month, uh, 42 month run. <coughs> Excuse me. His 42 month run. I think maybe the heat's on a little bit too high. Um... So here he is coming at the end of the sixth year of seals, just like we saw at the end of the sixth seal. And the world is freaking out. And listen to what it says, verse 11. I beheld then because the voice of the great words, there it is again, you see that? Great words, great words, spoke against the Most High, spoke, spake, spake these great words. He's never trying to overtake his throne. That's not till a trumpet's portion. Okay, it's always great words, which the horn spake, I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame as concerning the rest of the beasts. They had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and time. So you have the big battle of Gog and Magog, the, the revelation like you saw Stephen Ben Danun finally have, because it's the Lord coming at the end of the sixth seal, heavenly Mount Zion, who's going to destroy them by the word of his mouth. But all of these other leaders, these 10 kings and everybody else, the, anti, uh, uh, the false prophet, they're not going to die. Only all of their dominion and authority is going to be taken away. Out of everybody that dies and came to battle, yes, there's probably going to be millions upon millions and millions dying in that battle. But the leader who is the antichrist is going to be the one who's killed out of the leadership the the top brass it is going to be the antichrist who's killed and look what happens i saw in the night visions and i beheld one like the son of man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days and brought him near before him and there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. This is the end of seals, brothers. The end of the six years of seals, brothers and sisters. We go back to Genesis chapter 1 and check this out. Go to the end of Genesis chapter 1. And where did he create male and female? Where did the creation of the creatures begin? Where did it happen, brothers and sisters? sixth day the sixth day of creation was the creation of the males and females which are represented by the light group from when he was made light for this portion and at the beginning of this period of time in the end of days when the 50 days are over <coughs> and this time begins what is it it's the light portion he came as a light for 40 days he enlightens his workers who will go out and be his light and who are they working to bring in for the great multitude rapture? His created creation portion 
from the light age from the time of days and what were they they were created on the sixth day in the end of days <clears throat> in the end of days when are they going to be saved when are they going to be saved when he come and defeats the enemy at the end of the sixth year of seals do you think that's a coincidence do you think that's a coincidence the timing of the sun and the moon and the sun and the moon fell and and that rome is the sun and 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 uh the arabs the the muslim in particular of the arabs they're the moon they've both fallen they were created on the fourth day their leadership with the antichrist and false prophet created on the fourth day the temple is built is being rebuilt during seals but in the fourth year it comes to an end and only the foundation is laid because everything else started to turn and then in the second half of mark's discourse after all that stuff had taken place you've got the abomination of desolation and that's the first abomination of desolation and he goes after the saints and the exact same conversation from daniel 7 from daniel 11 is revelation chapter 13 with the antichrist and the false prophet and the mark of the beast which is literally because it's the abomination of desolation that's in the temple which is still the flesh at that time because the only thing that was built was the temple foundation do you think it's just by chance that the that the antichrist and false prophet that the beast and the false prophet are mentioned at the about the midway point in mark's discourse and then at the end of the six years he's had his 42 months the lord comes destroys him all the others including the false prophet they're allowed to continue but have no more authority their power their dominion is all taken away and the lord will then what well we know he's going to seal the 144 he's going to bring in the rapture group and then what is he going to do he's going to make a covenant with all nations it's the lord god's covenant at the very end of the seventh year of seals to begin trumpets he's given dominion and authority he's the other witness he's the high priest melchizedek right this is the end of the sixth year of seals going into the seventh year of seals what was the seventh year of seals well lo and behold you go into genesis chapter 2 and what happened on the seventh day the lord rested from everything that the lord god what created didn't i show you that luke's discourse was all about the created i'm uh, sorry mark's discourse right we were talking about the difference in the beginnings Matthew said the world and what did Mark say? Uh where is it? Uh I don't Oh, I know what I can do. <laughs> yes, I know where it was right here. All right? Uh da -da -da. creation Oh, there we go. 19. So in verse 19, look at that. In verse 19, for in those days shall be affliction such as was not from the beginning of the creation i'm gonna take off my jacket so you can still see it's freezing here minus 16 but my garage is nice and toasty now all right so we see creation when we get to matthews you don't see creation you see world and it just so happens that genesis chapter one and that group of people and that group of the creation is all about what he what what he created right created created and then what happens at the sixth day it's all over just like the lord coming at the end of the sixth year of seals and then what then he rested on the seventh day from everything he created what happens in the seventh year of seals the enemy is destroyed their power and authority is taken away he seals the hundred and forty four thousand the great multitude rapture come in he makes a covenant with all nations now and then trumpets begins and the rebuilding starts with zerubbabel who had said whose hands will complete it and yeshua joshua yeshua messiah the son of man the lamb who is going to be the high priest and king as well it's just awesome let's go back to mark's discourse Continue down the trail of Mark's discourse. All of these things are directly lined up 
with the creation story and prophecy in the end of days. So then what do we see? Here he is. Here's that time at the end of the six years of seals. And in those days, after that tribulation, the sun was dark and the moon did not give her light. The stars of heaven um, and the stars of heaven shall fall and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great glory, uh, power and glory. Isn't that exactly in the clouds of heaven over in Daniel chapter 7? Aren't the, the stars of heaven that are coming, being cast to the ground, is part of the sixth seal when they see him coming? It's all perfectly aligned. This is when he comes at the end of six years of seals. The world is going to see whatever this is coming down. This is why Ben Danun was freaking out. The, this is the Gog Magog war when they see this coming. And he destroys all those armies coming against. It is the Son of Man coming from heaven to destroy them. Wild. And then to think tribulation's not over after that? That's crazy stuff. You see? What do you see next? Then it says, uh, nobody knows. You know, time and authority. Cock crowing, you see? And then it says to all watch. Matthews is nothing like this. Matthews goes on into much more discussion and it continues into Matthew chapter 25 from Matthew 24. All of this is just the seal's portion. Look at this. Let's see. Revelation 12. Yeah, see, same thing in Revelation 12. Where is it with Revelation 12? Look at that. His tail drew a third of the stars to heaven, did cast them down to the earth to devour the man-child, right? As it was, uh, as soon as it was born, she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. You see, this is the end of seals. If the first one goes before travail, then that means there's a pre-trib group that went before the travailing even started. Which also means that the other group being called was caught up is the rapture group that goes to paradise. And that's what's revealed to us that we've shared a million times from 2 Corinthians chapter 12. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. See, what's above 14 years? The 50 days. These are the ones in Christ. It's like a rapture. It's not the rapture. It's like a rapture. And they're going to the third heaven. This is the group going to the Luke chapter 14 wedding. Then it says, and I knew such a man. So not in Christ, but, you know, they came to, to learn to love Christ and so forth. But they weren't the same in Christ spirit filled as the first group. And it says how that he was caught up. This was caught up is the one from Revelation chapter 12, verse 5. And where do they go? They go to paradise. Do you think it's it's a wonder why when you come to Gen, uh, Revelation chapter 6, you come to the end of the sixth seal, they see this coming down. The world is freaking out. They're in a panic. You see, you see the story now, and you can understand it from somebody else's perspective that it that it's the Lord coming, this what he, what he wrote in his title extraterrestrial it's something coming from above it's the lord coming he's going to destroy them all it's this right here and check this out do you think it's a wonder that everything happening here in revelation 7 happens before the seventh seal that's because the great multitude rapture is between the sixth and seventh seal it is in the midst of the seventh year of seals. This is that great multitude rapture, which is the was caught up of Revelation chapter 12, verse 5. How do you know? Because the sun came first, who's to rule all nations with a rod of iron. 
then which is chapter six the the end of the sixth seal and then chapter seven before the seventh seal you have the was caught up this is this is mark's discourse right here so this is this is whoops this is luke's discourse right here to the escape and then this pain to be delivered the travail goes right to here this is the 40 days of the son of man when this time is up right here begins the 14 years the travailing in birth is the 40 days of the son of man the pain is the beginning of tribulation this is the storyline right here right to the rapture of revelation chapter 7 that is the end of the story of mark chapter 13. there's your look at look, look at 13. All right we just read it after that tribulation the sun shall be dark and i'll give her light the stars of heaven shall fall the powers of heaven shall be shaken then shall they see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven what do we see in daniel 7 we see the beast that was slain right so the antichrist is killed the one who spake great things the rest of them had their dominion taken away and then what do you see one like the son of man came in the clouds of heaven hello that is all mark's discourse what happens when the lord comes right watch this in revelation chapter 17 we see when the lord comes hold on a second in revelation chapter C, ch- chapter 17 listen to this we're going to cover this in a little bit too in verse 8 it says the beast that thou saw was is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit what does it mean by was well when was he given authority about mid seals right he was given his power and authority for 42 months this is the was and then it says and is not why because at the end of his 42 months the lord descends and destroys them and the lord has now made an agreement a covenant with all nations he's been destroyed and killed the battle of, of gog and magog ezekiel 39 has taken place the burning the weapons now that's the is not and then what do you see and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit this is the second half of seals this is the first half of trumpets and this is the second half of trumpets i'm going to show it to you but the conversation you're going to see here is at the end of his was okay listen to this uh revelation 7 14 you're going to see it even in the conversation these shall make war with the lamb okay um this is the tent now listen to this right here and the ten horns did we just see that we saw that the beast that had ten horns was the antichrist right it was the the middish mark discourse we see from daniel chapter 7 that it was the first three and then he took the authority of all of them we see that it was revelation 13 when he had the power and authority from all of them right we see that the that they all have their power that then gets taken away but their lives extended and only the beast is killed and not even the false prophet listen to what it says and the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet but receive power as kings one hour with the beast these have one mind and they shall give their power and strength unto the beast these shall make war with the lamb this is the ezekiel 39 war and the lamb shall overcome them for he is the lord of lords and king of kings see that only one uppercase l and one uppercase k and they that are with them are called and chosen and faithful hello sound familiar and those that are with them are called and chosen and faithful let's go to daniel 7 again okay daniel 7 there he is the fourth beast which is the antichrist getting his power there's his ten horns the lord father comes down the son is there and look who's with him ten thousand times ten thousand thousands and thousands stood before him and then what do we see okay and the beast and the rest of the beasts 
had their dominion taken away and their lives were preserved. And then we see that he gets his power and his authority and his dominion. This shouldn't be hard for any of us here in this ministry to follow anymore. We now have the storyline from in the beginning, in the beginning. <laughs> it's so awesome. And this year at this time with 30 days to go, you see how the detail is built and built and built and built. Greater detail, greater clarity, greater detail, greater clarity. A lot of this stuff we, we've now known for a long time, even though we can add more details and more scriptures to prove it out. We can take it all the way back to the creations and show it throughout. But the greatest thing for us now is everybody watching pre-trib is the ability to go back to in the beginning and understand that those first 7,000 or seven years or seven days to the Lord represent as the easy seven years of the end of days. More importantly, is that 50 that comes first, which is discerned now by the sun and the moon having gone off course, which is 50 days earlier, perfectly aligned for us to be revealed in the end of days. Because the Son of Man is the beginning as the first fruits. You see this? So now we know that he's destroyed, right? How about this? Let's go to the end of Zechariah chapter 6. Zechariah, 14 chapters. They literally play out prophetically like the 14 years. So if we go to chapter 6, is like the end of seals. At the end of the sixth year of seals. And look at what it says. Uh, Zechariah 6 verse 11. We know that Zerubbabel, who is the branch, who's going to continue to finish it, right? He had laid the foundation, had to stop after the foundation was laid. When the Lord returns in the temple and everything is going to be rebuilt, we know Zerubbabel, whoever the modern day Zerubbabel is, is going to be the one to oversee this whole rebuilding and be the one responsible for it. While Yeshua, Joshua, Messiah, the high priest, Melchizedek, and king is going to be with his 144,000 of the priests. And wherever they go, he's, they're, they're going to follow wherever he goes, right? They're, he's going to be with them everywhere. Verse 11, Zechariah 6, the end of the sixth seal. Then take silver and gold and make crowns and set them on the head of Joshua, right? Yeshua, Hosea, the son of Josedek, the high priest. And speak unto him, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Behold, the man whose name is the branch. You see, that's not Joshua. That's Zerubbabel. Right? The, the Zerubbabel, who we know is, is from Babylon, but he's a Jew, right? And it says, um, Whose name is the branch, and he shall grow up out of his place, and shall build the temple of the Lord. Well, we already know. We shared that earlier. Zerubbabel laid the foundation and the Lord said his hands will finish it. Even he shall build the temple of the Lord and he shall bear the glory and sit and rule upon his throne. And he shall be a priest upon the throne and the council of peace shall be between them both. Do you think it's a mystery why you had all the conversation <coughs> as you read about these two being the, the two candles and so forth? These are the two witnesses like we've shared. Yeshua Messiah is one of them. And whoever the modern day Zerubbabel is that you'll find out laying seal, the seals, the foundation during seals. That's him. That's your modern day Zerubbabel. And he's going to be the honor of completing the temple with the Lord there when trumpets begin. All of it connected. Every single piece is connected from creation, from Old Testament prophets, from the Psalms, from, from the, the, the Gospels, to the end in the book of Revelation. Every single part and piece Remember this in the chapters to years that we did with Psalms. We know he's coming on heavenly Mount Zion. Psalms 18 is that beginning. Then you've got what? 
the beginning of one year two three four five six so look at this as the end of the sixth year and look at what it says and the fullness thereof the world and they that dwell therein well who's the fullness of the world the gentiles the house of israel the gentiles grafted in for he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods who shall ascend the hill of the lord and who shall stand in his holy place he that hath clean hands you see this clean hands is not the same as you saw in 18. this group is the one that what in the hollow of the hand they're holding palm branches they're holding palm branches those are the ones who shall be able to go up to his holy place these aren't the dead in christ these are the ones who made it through the tribulation of the six years of seals we've covered this many times look at this in revelation chapter 7 those who have the palms in their hands you see and those who have what palms they're holding palm branches these are the ones that have the palms in their hand it's the same group this is all to the end of mark's discourse that's why you didn't see anything about anything about the 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 foolish and wise virgins you didn't see anything about the the days of noah it has nothing to do with the portion of seals none of it so what happens when he comes at the end of the six years of seals that represent the six days of creation in that seventh year of rest we know the first thing he's going to do after he destroys the enemy so the enemy is the sun and the moon is the typology of the false prophet and the antichrist he gets destroyed when he gets destroyed it's the end of the sixth year it's the end of the sixth day of creation what happened in the sixth day of creation they created the the males and the females and then he rested What's going to happen after the six years of seals? He's going to destroy the sun and the moon who did this, not the actual sun and the moon. He's going to destroy the sun and the moon typology, right? Take away the power of the false prophet and destroy the the Antichrist. And what is he going to do? Then he's going to rescue the those that were from his original creation in the light. It's the final group of those representing the light on the earth. The first group was the spirit filled. And when he does, he's going to first seal a group of workers. Who is that group of workers? It's the second group, guys. Remember this? In Luke chapter 12. And if he shall come in the second watch. What is the second watch? The end of the six years of seals and the beginning of the seventh year. It's the end now of Mark's entire gospel where he now is bringing these guys in, sealing the 144, and the great multitude rapture comes in. This is what will take place in that seventh day. The seventh day of creation is the seventh year of seals. He's destroyed the Gog Magog battle. He seals his people. He 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 rescues those lost sheep that he came for. Then he's going to make a covenant with the nations, with all people. It is the Lord. You see, it is it's confusion that had everybody thinking that it was Antichrist. That is going to make this covenant stand in the midst of it and then renew it and do it. No. No, no, no. It's confusion because everybody's learned from Matthew and they don't realize that there's another set. You see? Now we're coming in. We're at the end of seals. Look what Daniel told us about the end of seals. Daniel 9, verse 25. Know therefore and understand that from uh that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to rebuild Jerusalem at the beginning, right? At the beginning of that 50 to 14 year start to rebuild, to restore and to rebuild Jerusalem, which means it's got to be destroyed unto the Messiah, the Prince shall be seven weeks. 
well if these 70 weeks were 70 weeks of years what do you think seven weeks is seven years what happened during those seven years seals the jews were removed when at the destruction of jerusalem they were removed and the only thing that got built by a group that was brought back in specifically to allow the building process to restart was a group to start rebuilding of which they're only going to get the temple built but the entire community of of the jews of those who survived are removed for those seven years when these seven years are done everybody the great multitude rapture and then the jews come back into the land as well why because the lord is on zion he's come down on heavenly mount zion on paradise and so what do you see the next three and a half what's going to happen they're going to rebuild the wall and the temple and everything even in troublous times why is it still troublous times well because (laughs) there's still going to be the first four trumpets There's still going to be craziness going on around the world. Look what happens now in Zechariah 8. You guys know this like the back of your hands. Zechariah 8 tells us what? The Lord is no longer jealous. He's now there. It's the mountain of the Lord. And what does he tell them? Let your hands be strong. You that hear in these days, these words by the mouth of the prophets, which were in the day that the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid, that the temple might be built. Why couldn't it happen before in the first seven years? Because there was no peace. I had said affliction, neighbor against neighbor, people against people, you see. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. So now when we go to Matthew 24, look at this. Remember Matthew 24, it's the only one that says the end of the world. What is the sign of thy coming in the end of the world? This word coming is only used in Matthew's discourse in the Gospels. And only in Matthew is it about the end of the world. Remember what we read earlier? I was saying we would remember that. Now I'm going to have to go look. <laughs> right? In Mark's, it was it was the creation. What is it in Matthew's? The world. What was Mark's portion? The creation of days. What is Matthew's portion? The world from when the flesh began. Over and over and over it plays out. And it's absolutely perfect every single time. Now check this out. I've talked on this a number of times, but it's so much fun. Remember what happened. So if you're following the escape, Luke's discourse plays out. The Son of Man is here for 40 days. There's a group of workers with him. They receive the anointing. Other events have taken place. Then Jerusalem is attacked and destroyed. The Jews are scattered. The disciple workers are working during seals. Then it's World War III and all the craziness that takes place. Then the Antichrist gets his power and authority. He takes control of things, settles things, and then brings destruction and the mark of the beast and destruction against Christians, against the saints, and is able to overpower them right most of them and then what happens well we saw that in mark's discourse there was no mention of false prophet or false christ in the first part it wasn't until just after the half part halfway part that it mentioned then false christ and false prophets and then i just ran you through that to show that in the creation their typology is the sun and the moon that have fallen from the firmament which is why they're off course why they were created in the fourth day why in the fourth year the foundation only was laid and then everything else stopped and then what happened then the lord comes the gog magog battle what happens a whole bunch probably tens of millions are destroyed but out of that echelon upper echelon of leadership only the antichrist the beast is destroyed so now who's left who's left out of the leadership of the false prophet and antichrist only the false prophet is left Remember. Revelation chapter 7 said that um, uh, uh, was, is not, and shall be. So when we come now to the beginning of Matthew's discourse, which is now the beginning of the seven years of trumpets, the Lord is there on Mount Zion. We're now in 
the the Revelation seven where it's saying and is not, okay? Because he's the the beast has already been killed, but not the false prophet. So now when we come to Matthew's discourse, listen to what it says, verse eleven. Now let's start in verse ten. Uh, and then shall many be offended, and shall shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Where's the where's the false Christ? He was killed. You see, the typology is is that he was killed at the end of seals, and at the beginning of trumpets. Only the false prophet is still kicking around out of the two. It's the is not from Revelation 17, and then. The reason he was not is because the Lord is telling you while he's here as the is not portion of time while the Lord is here and the Antichrist is not. We see that it was the battle as the Lord of Lords and King of Kings when he destroyed him. It was the exact same story, Ezekiel 39. It's the exact same story from 2nd Esdras. And that's why there's no false Christs mentioned in the first portion of Trumpets. Isn't that wild? That when I discovered that one, it just blew me away. All right, it's it's this right here. The beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to a burning flame. As concerning the rest of the beast, they had their dominion taken away, but their lives were prolonged for a season and time. It's so awesome. What about Revelation eight? Look at what happens in Revelation eight. Okay. You had the seventh seal, this, what does it say? There was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour, which I believe is about six months, probably, you know, five-ish or so months. Because why? He's now making a covenant with all nations. The Lord is. Look what happens during the first half of trumpets. So when it says that he's leading in the, in the midst of, of chaos, it's because you got five trumpets, uh, four trumpets being blown. These four trumpets are taking place during the first half of the seven years of trumpets. Where am I? Uh, oh, chapter eight. Okay. These first four trumpets are, do they take place all at once? Are they scattered? Is it some, you know, it's probably a combination of things playing out. And look at what it says. Okay, 8, 11, there's wormwood, okay? Wormwood is calamity, is bitterness, right? They're going to die from it. It's going to be a poisoning. See, a third part of the sun, a third part of the moon is hit. And then what do you have? Three woes. What are the three woes? The final three trumpets. What happens at, at this trumpets portion, okay? Watch this. We go back to Matthew 24. As we start winding this down, and what do we see again? We have another abomination of desolation in Matthew chapter 24. I told you they were separate. In this abomination of desolation, remember before it, you only have false prophet. In Mark, you had no false prophet, no false Christ tell after it. We know Antichrist is killed, so the beast is killed. So before, in the first half of trumpets, there's no beast or antichrist. There's only false prophet because he wasn't killed. He just had his dominion taken away. Okay. And then look what we see. The abomination of desolation. This abomination of desolation takes place about midway through trumpets. But what, did hap what has now happened during the first half of trumpets? During the first half of trumpets, Daniel 9 told us, Zechariah 8 told us that they were rebuilding the city and the streets and the wall, even in troublous times. Why do you think troublous times? Because the first four trumpets are still going off throughout the earth. All of the rebuilding, let your hands be strong, you in these days. That are going to what? Build on the foundation of the temple that was already laid. 
it's going to happen for three and a half years until what until matthew 24 the abomination of desolation in matthew and the reason for the difference of the wording stand stand in the holy place is because at this point of mid trumpets the temple is now built the temple is built the repairing the seat the streets the wall it's been rebuilt and that puts us what in the 11th year what did first king 6 at the end say in total it was four years bang the foundation was laid and it was seven years to complete it and it was in the 11th year what is this abomination of desolation take place in the 11th year about 10 and a half years into the entirety of tribulation from late may to june of this year the beginning of the 14 years this abomination of desolation is the abomination of desolation from daniel chapter 12. okay this abomin of de- abomination of desolation is the one right here verse 11 and from the time listen to this and from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away when the rapture is gone okay when the rapture has been taken away and comma and the abomination that makes desolate set up which means after the rapture to the time of everything being established in the lord there there's going to be a period of time that is going to take 1290 days to set up what do you think that period of time is go to revelation chapter 12. revelation chapter actually yeah revelation chapter 12 tells you look at this here's when he comes right on heavenly mount zion end of the sixth seal in the seventh year of seals there's the rapture and then what do you have the woman fled into the wilderness where she's protected for what 1260 days so for the first 1260 three and a half years the first three and a half approximate years of trumpets what's happening there's a war taking on taking place in heaven while this protection is happening this battle is happening in heaven when the 1260 days are done what's happening during that time the rebuilding of the city and the streets and the temple they're happening during this first three and a half years of trumpets with the lord there with zerubbabel building you see and then what well when satan loses so we know that it's going to take about three and a half years to rebuild which is exactly what first king six said that it would be in the 11th year that it would be complete so when you're reading daniel chapter 12 and daniel chapter 12 tells you about the abomination of desolation how long it will take to be set up what's it talking about it means the abomination of desolation here couldn't happen until the temple the physical temple was rebuilt you see when it was moses's time it was the temple of flesh that was portable when the gentile age is done that portable flesh of the temple which is us is gone in the great multitude rapture then it goes back to what was and they're going to have what a physical temple again not a fleshly temple so that temple needs to be rebuilt once all that's rebuilt this is what it says right and the abomination of desolation set up there will be 1290 days so 30 days longer than that battle that took place in heaven that battle between them of 1260 is between michael and his angels and satan and his angels you see and then what happens he's cast down so there's another 30 days of whatever casting down and and stepping into it in a, in a battle breaking out right a short-term one this is what it is this is the first half when you see them in numbers like this it's the first half of trumpets when you come up here and it says uh where is it in verse seven it says and i heard the man clothed in linen which was upon the waters of the river when he held up his right hand 
uh, and his left hand unto heaven and swore by him that liveth forever that it shall be for a time, times, and a half. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. You notice there's no end between time, times. Only a comma. This only means two and a half years. It means one, comma, two, right? Comma, and a half. So it's like saying one, two, three, four, five, and a half. Would that be all additions? No. It would be saying one year, two years, three years, four years, five years, and a half. The total would be five and a half years because there's no end here. Right? You guys know this one. When you go to Revelation 12 to find out, you see from the first woe, what do we see? Right? The woman flew on the wings of a great eagle into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time, comma, and times and a half. That means one plus two plus a half. This is three and a half years. This is the second half of trumpets to the very end of the 14 years. This in Daniel 12 will only take us to the end of 13 years because Satan is only going to have two and a half years of power to bring about that final destruction before the Lord returns feet down on the Mount of Olives and brings about the second battle. And when that year battle is done, then he will bring those who were in the wilderness protected on the wings of an eagle. Then he will bring them back from the wilderness. And then they get their jubilee beginning. So look at what it says. This abomination of desolation is the one that will happen at mid trumpets. This is the mid trumpets. The 1260 to the 1290, it's an additional 30 days. We know it exactly. When we come to Daniel, uh, sorry, Matthew uh, 24 again, there was only the false prophet. The Lord was here and the false prophet had no authority anymore, right? Then the abomination of desolation happens because the temple has now been rebuilt. <laughs> Even Daniel chapter 9, let's go back to Daniel chapter 9. In Daniel chapter 9, it says that uh, da, 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 we know it's about three and a half years, then Messiah shall be cut off. Why is Messiah cut off? Because Satan has lost his battle against Michael. He's being cast down and all of his fallen with him. And what do we know they're going to do? They're going to open the pit. You see? So Messiah is now going to be cut off. But not for himself, but the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. You see? They're coming to bring about the destruction and declare themselves God in the midst of it. And it shall be what? With a flood. Who does he go after with a flood? The woman on the wings of an eagle. And he, then he goes after with a flood and the earth opens and swallows it up. And then what does it say? And unto the end of the war, desolations are determined. How long is this period of time from Messiah cut off to the end of this war? Two and a half years. Two and a half of the final three and a half years of trumpets when Satan himself has been cast down. What is Matthew's portion, brothers and sisters? You guys know it. Matthew's portion is when the thousands began. Hello. When the thousands began with Adam and Eve. This is the, the actual thousands, the flesh portion that we talk about, that we all live in, but not live by. You want to be of the spirit, right? This is when the flesh was now created. The day's portion was light. The Luke portion was spirit. When he formed Adam, what did he do? He put him in the garden. He placed him in the garden. 
do you remember what is coming down at the end of seals the lord is coming with heavenly mount zion what do you think that is who shall ascend the mountain of the lord those with strong hands right those with the palms in their hands where the rapture group is going remember when do they get to go well they're gonna have to bury bones it seems right even it even said that in ezekiel it'll take about seven months to bury the bones that's why if you go from taurus and you consider the time when they come in at pentecost but it's going to take seven months it's going to bring you to where to passover when new wheat can be observed the following year at the time of passover so amazing and where are they going where are they going it's so awesome the the scriptures already tell us it's not a guessing game where are they going when the rapture group is brought in they're going to paradise what did the lord come down on heavenly mount zion he's he's, he's with paradise and it just so happens that the flesh portion the beginning of trumpets it starts with the typology and the creation of the flesh in paradise It's 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 so magnificent. We go back to Genesis chapter two, and who corrupts? Who ended up corrupting them in the garden? Right? Who corrupted now? The flesh group. You see, from the time of Genesis chapter two, when it now went to the creation of Adam, that started the seven thousand years of the flesh which is starting what? The 7,000 years of trumpets. You had the sun and the moon as the reflection of Antichrist and false prophet. Antichrist is killed. The Lord came and saved that creation from the sixth day at the end of the sixth year. Now it goes to the time of the flesh and it's 7,000 years that we're in and those 7,000 are days to the Lord and in the end of days, they're represented as seven years of trumpets. And who's the one that came and corrupted this group? Satan. Who is the one that comes and corrupts this group in the end of days? Satan. Satan. When? In the midst of the seven, in the midst of uh, uh, of the seventh year of trumpets, about the middle. This is what we call in the video that we did. It's uh, it's all a fractal. But now we have the ability to take it all the way back to the beginning. <laughs> well, what happens when Satan is cast out at that point and he's lost? What happens? Well, we saw he's that old servant, serpent, the devil and Satan. Satan. What is the serpent? Right? If you go to Genesis 3, right? He, he was the serpent, the seraphim. That's the one who wants authority over God the Father, whereas the Antichrist wants the authority over Christ. But when the dragon is cast down, do you guys remember what happens? Let's go to Revelation chapter 9. See, what is the fifth trumpet? The fifth trumpet is the first woe. And here comes a star crashing down, and what does he do? He's got a key to open the bottomless pit. There's the opening of the bottomless pit, brothers and sisters, at the fifth trumpet. Now, do you understand Revelation 17? Okay, now the pit is open at the fifth trumpet, about 10 and a half years and change into tribulation, about three and a half years into trumpets, while the temple had now been physically rebuilt. And look at what it says. The beast that was, second half of seals, and is not, first half of trumpets, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. When the pit is opened, Antichrist is coming back. The pit is going to open and who knows what else of craziness is coming out of there. You see, this is when Satan is cast down. This is why in the 11th year or chapters to years, Zechariah chapter 11, (laughs) this is Satan being cast down. When Satan's cast down, 
Look at what the Lord says. Zechariah 11, verse 10, And I took my staff, even beauty, and cut it asunder, that I might break my covenant, listen to this, which I had made with all people. And it was broken in that day. You see? I made it with all people. And I had to break it in that day. Why? Because Satan's been cast down. And the pit is open. When the pit is open, you guys want to understand 2 Thessalonians? You want to understand what this means? <clears throat> Listen to this. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. When do you think this one in 2 Thessalonians is going to play out? The beginning of tribulation? The middle of seals? The beginning of trumpets? The middle of trumpets? Ding, ding, ding. Middle of trumpets. What is the time of the great falling away when the son of perdition comes? What happens when the pit is open and he comes back? He was, he is not the first half of trumpets, and then he is in the second half. He's going to exalt himself above all that is called God and worship and stand in the temple of God to be named God. This is when the temple is built and it will actually happen. This is what? The falling away. Do you guys remember this? Remember the seven churches? And we've got a video on it in the intro. Remember what happens? We're in the Laodicean age now. When the Laodicean age comes to an end, it'll all start over again. And guess what? Who's Philadelphia? Here's when the Lord comes. Here's when the Lord comes. See, the church reformation. This is the seventh year of seals representation. The period of Israel's kings, just like the Lord. The period of Israel's kings. Tribulation, uh, the trumpet's time starts. Philadelphia, the 144,000 go out and do missionary work. At the end of their three and a half years, represented by the Philadelphia age in the 14 years of tribulation. Then it's the period of Israel's removal. You see, the king, Messiah, is cut off, but not for himself. And then what happens? It will begin the Laodicean age, the time of apostasy again. What happens at this point? The falling away that is going to take place when the pit is opened and the son of perdition comes out of the pit. You see? Who's the son of perdition that comes out of the pit? It's the beast, right? The one who was, is not, and shall be. So when we go back to Revel, uh, to Matthew chapter 24, guess what you see after the abomination of desolation? The temple's been built and they're going to come in and destroy it and do their thing. Look at what you see next. False Christs and false prophets. How is it the false Christ suddenly shows up again? Because the second half of seals, he was. The first half of trumpets, he was not. And the second half of trumpets, when he comes back out of the pit, he shall be. It's all here, brothers and sisters. And how long is this going to last? You see that? How long is this going to last? For as the lightning that lighteth out of the east and shineth unto the west, so the coming of the Son of Man shall be. Verse 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun shall be dark and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Then all the tribes of the earth shall mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. You see, this in no longer means in, it means on. What time is this when he's coming? What time is this? Revelation chapter 19, here it is, brothers and sisters. He's going to have another great war. Remember that? Verse 11, 19, 11. And I saw heaven open, and upon and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he does judge and make war. 
His eyes were as a flame as a fire. And on his head were many crowns. Hello. Ring a bell? Ring a bell? On his head were many crowns? Wasn't Joshua crowned at the end of seals to the start of trumpets with many crowns? And he had a name written that no man knew but himself. Uh, down to verse 14. And the armies which are in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goes a sharp sword. And that it, uh, and that he would smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he that treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. He hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, all uppercase. We know this very well, don't we? This is the second battle. This is the Ezekiel or Zechariah chapter 14, Lord returning feet down on the Mount of Olives battle, where it says that he will battle again as he did before. It's the second one. This is the one to destroy the enemy and listen to what it says. Verse, continuing in verse 18, uh, that ye may eat the flesh of kings. That's talking about the birds of all the men, great and small. Verse 19, Revelation 19, 19 and 20. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war. See, a lot of people would say, well, see, this is the end of seals. No, it isn't. The beast has returned from the pit. And the kings of the earth had their dominion taken away. But they weren't killed. And their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image, these both were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. Hello. Hello. These both were cast into the lake alive in the lake of brimstone, a fire and brimstone. You see that? At the end of seals, he was only killed. At mid-trumpets, he's brought back. When you go to Matthew chapter 24, you guessed it. That's why you see him having come back. How does he also have an army with him? Because all those who had their dominion taken away still worked their groups that were with them. They had another group ready to come and battle against them. Until the Lord comes as the capital King of Kings and Lord of Lords, all uppercase. It is the revelation right here at this point right here of Zechariah chapter 14 at the beginning. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. See that? Verse 3. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. That was the end of seals. It's a beautiful, beautiful picture of creation throughout history to the end of days. You see that? Satan, guys. Antichrist, false prophet. They go after Christ's people. Antichrist. Satan is going after God's people. But when he comes, he's going to open the pit and the son of perdition will come back or will be resurrected and be as the son of perdition. And when he does, it's back to the Laodicean age. It's the final portion of time of the seven churches in the revelation of the 14 years of the end of days. As I bring this to an end and you follow what had happened. So you see, the story of of paradise and the creation of the flesh and adam and eve and and what satan did and the typology of the end of days even though the typology of satan is like the corruption and the typology in the book of genesis in in chapter three when satan did this we're still in there seven you get it 
we're still in the final sevens of thousands. So you had the creation, first two verses. They were a type of 7,000 or seven days to the Lord, but they're also a type of days, the 50 days first. And Luke's discourse. Then you've got the days of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the typology of the sun and the moon and this creation of males and females. And the sun and the moon were, fell and got corrupted. And they corrupted the males and the females all throughout history in their typology and their mark. They're the light group. They're the world, the sleeping church, and all those that will finally come in before that time is up. And he rested on the sixth day, after the sixth day to the seventh. He's going to rescue them after he destroys the enemy at the end of the sixth day or the sixth year in the end of days, which is what? Also the 6,000, or, or sorry, almost the 6,000 in the final what? Oh, after the seventh day of rest, which is another second 7,000, but to the Lord was days, comes to an end. And then trumpets, the final seven, is the typology of the entirety of the 7,000 that we're in right now. But to the Lord, there's seven days. To the end of the days, to the end of days, they're the seven years of trumpets and they're Matthew's portion. Satan wants God's people. God's people were the ones that are the flesh. It was his creation for the flesh. That's why he chose the Jews. Hello. We're living in their portion of the 7,000. So when their portion is over and the Lord returns feet down and destroys the enemy, when is he doing it? Right to the end of their 6,000, which is like to the end of the six days for the Mark group, the, the light group that he came to save that were the lost sheep of the house of Israel, grafted in with the Gentiles. Whereas Judah is God's portion and that formation of man and the flesh portion. What does he do when the Lord comes then and he returns as lightning from one end unto the other? Do you remember where that lightning is from one end unto the other? In Luke chapter 17. Remember this? In Luke chapter 17, he tells them, uh, For as lightning cometh, uh, or as lightning that lighteth out of one part of heaven and shineth unto the other part of heaven, so shall the Son of Man be in his day. And then he goes to verse 25 and he says, But first, because this is his 40 days, this is his rescuing of the of the lot group, those that were there during the buying and selling, Mark of the Beast. And what did he say for this group? As lightning shines from one unto the other, this is his day. This is when he returns feet down on the Mount of Olives. And what happens during that, that, that final day to the Lord or that, that final year of the 14 years? What happens? Well, you got the days of Noah, right? Do you think it's a mystery why you've got the days of Noah that follow the day and hour no one knows and it's the days of Noah? This represents when the 13 years of tribulation of, are done and the 14th year is there. Do you know what it is? For anybody that's new, remember I said there were two brides? The first bride was the Gentile one at the beginning and the seven-day wedding and then when the 14 years what happens? Well, historically, what would happen is at 13 years old, she could be married, right? They would have the, what, the, the betrothal or something. And they were officially married. Then he would go away for a year and he would prepare a place in his father's house. And then at the sounding of the trumpet by the father, he would return and go get her. They would have the final wedding after that one year, approximately. They would have the final wedding and it would last a week. And 14 years and the wedding time was over. What do you think this final year is right here? What do you think this final typology in the story of Noah is in Matthew 24? It's the one year, like the story of Noah, approximately one year. Where he's preparing the earth, he's going to repair it, destroy the enemy, get everything set and ready. And then what happens? What happens when this final year as Noah is over? Go to chapter 25. The 14 years are now over. The seventh year of trumpets is over. And what happens? 
it's time for his wedding in the kingdom of heaven on earth. See, everybody talks about this, the, the foolish and the wise virgins, and you want to be the wise virgins and, and be pre-trib. It has zero to do with us. It's all for the Jews. It's all at the end of the 14th year. Some of them were asleep. Some of them were wise. What were they going into? They were going into the marriage. Not the marriage in the kingdom of God, which is the Gentile bride at the beginning. They're going to the one to the kingdom of heaven for the Jews. At the end, there's the 13th year and the 14th year. Go look up the ancient weddings in, in ancient Jewish history. 13 years. They were legally married. He would go for one year to prepare a place. And then <clears throat> it would be his returning and the sound of the shofar by the father. He would go get his bride and the wedding would take place. This is that story. This is that story. And the final seven day wedding for the second marriage. It's the entire story, brothers and sisters, the entirety of these stories is a what we call a fractal. The beginning is Luke's group. The day's creation is the Mark's group to the seven years of seals. The 7,000 from Adam to that we're in right now is the flesh group and it represents Matthew. But all three of them are living in this age of time. The spirit group must be taken out first before it all begins. The, the light group must be enlightened and wake up before their period of time comes to an end at the end of seals. And then what's left is the focus of the flesh to the Lord God's people. All revealed in order it's all there guys that's why daniel 9 when you see this this war so this flood and unto the end of the war this end of the war battle is the one that is the two and a half years with satan against the two witnesses it lasts two and a half years that's why it goes from the fifth trumpet the first woe with this battle and this war and it goes to the end of the seventh trump uh, the end of the sixth trumpet it lasts two and a half years and then the two witnesses are killed and after three days and three nights and a half they resurrect they go the lord returns feet down on the mount of olives and look at what it says he's going to confirm the covenant with many for one week because it was his covenant that he made at the beginning of trumpets, at the beginning of the seven years of trumpets, that he had to cut at mid-trumpets when Satan was cast down. When the abomination of desolation in Daniel took place, uh, sorry, and in Daniel 12 and in, and in Matthew 24, in Zechariah 11 when he had to cut it, when he returns feet down, he will renew it, and he will destroy all the enemies of Satan, uh, uh, of the Lord with Satan. That's the battle. That's the war that will last two and a half years. It's so incredible, guys. You see, and as I end it now, we've shown this many times to make the point. These are the vials. So a lot of people say, what about the vials? What about the bold judgments? They are going to be an extremely short period of time. I believe possibly even seven days. You see, what do you see here? Three unclean spirits like frogs came out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. How can anybody tell you that the dragon and the beast, the Antichrist, are the same character? It said three and listed them. How could these three be coming out of them? And these three with the beast and the false prophet who we know are cast in to the lake of fire first means this must have happened within a very short period of time at the very end of trumpets. 
You following? It's awesome. It's so exciting, guys. I really hope and pray you you take the time, if this was a lot, which I'm sure it was, especially if you're newer, that you take the time to follow this, to understand it, and you will have your understanding just explode in excitement to see that the creations, there are three, spirit, light, and flesh. That there are three synoptic gospels to three groups, Luke, Mark, and Matthew, spirit, light, and flesh. That the discourses are different for a reason. They're the spirit portion, the light portion, the flesh portion. Absolutely incredible. And to now know that Taurus is the Lord God's and Feast of First Fruits is the Son's. They were together in the beginning. Now the difference is separated because of the sun and the moon's fall. They are separated by 50 days. We had 14ers who stood on 14 years and we're 14ers standing on 14 years. We have the New Year of Trees which is the true end of 70 in relation to trees to the Lord God being two months off. We have the 50 days of the Son of Man relating to, I should say, to the to before the 14 years in Taurus, to the 50 days we knew began it all, and the 288th week in the 288th Shemitah year, all lining up at the end of 70 years right here. And the Lord God's 70 will end right in here. This is unbelievable. It is over the top. Get ready, keep watch, diligently seek the Lord. Be strong in your faith, come join us in the forum if you need the uplifting and the strengthening. I love you guys. God bless you. God bless your families. I know it was a big one. I know I covered a lot, but that's why I give so much time in between videos. Take your time, study it, be diligent if you don't know it very well yet, and you will be rewarded. Pray over it and ask the Spirit to reveal you the understanding. And you will never, ever see the Scriptures again the same way. It's absolutely incredible because it is the revelation of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God bless you. God bless your families. See you soon, either in the third heaven or girded up, ready to serve. God bless you. Bye for now.